All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 18th episode of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast. I am your host, Jeremy, a.k.a. NES Ruler 22, and welcome back to another week here on the podcast. I hope everybody had a safe and happy weekend. We are back again with another episode. This week, I'm going to talk about the recently released from 2013, the film Torture Chamber, which uh, I think you guys will find all of our opinions on, especially interesting, especially Mr. Moods, who introduced me and JP to the film. So we'll get to that later on in the show. Finish up with, uh, we're going to start out with the news, of course, with JP. Head into this week's question, which is a very fun question, which is the top five worst horror films of all time. You guys probably know what my number one is after talking about it a lot on this podcast. And then we'll be hopping into a little mood swings if Moods has anything to ramble off his mind. Hop into what we watched and finish up the show with our review on Torture Chambers. And uh, I know JP said the news is quite lengthy, so I thought JP could go ahead and start that shit up. Lengthy news is good, though. It's good. Yeah, right? well, it's potentially lengthy. You never know. You yep. know it's just like how how much we talk about each thing. And Keanu so. Reeves for a half an hour last week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no Keanu Reeves news this week, guys. Oh, Sorry. that's good. Sorry to disappoint. So uh, first up is, uh, this is kind of just a little um, piece of news. It, it really isn't like newsy but it's just something that maybe people were unaware of and it is uh the poltergeist remake that's supposed to hit theaters february 13th 2015 i guess is 3d because there was an interview with uh one of the actors (laughs) who said uh you know who who kind of spilled the beans and said that it was uh gonna be a 3d film yep i don't really care i think the poltergeist remake is just like it's one of those things that you say, and it's like, right, right, right. Yeah. Like, nobody cares at all. It's going to be an epic failure. <laughs> I did disagree. I think it's going to bring in like 20 plus million opening weekend. Um, I think, just because I think it's, it's a paranormal film in the mainstream. Yeah, I think it's going to do really good at the box office, too. But I think with, you know, the core fans, you know, the hardcore core horror fans i don't think it's going to do that well to be honest and usually the gimmick of 3d is just selling it more to the mainstream nobody's going to see a poltergeist remake remake they're going to see this fucking paranormal 3d film you know yeah mm-hmm. it, it's yeah. what it is man it's and it's kind of sad actually that they have to use that gimmick they're they're not just going to try and make a a poltergeist remake you know a good one they got to use that shitty ass gimmick of three fucking d i'm sorry but i hate it the thing is, I don't really think 3D actually helps much anymore. I think even the mainstream's kind of tired of it. Well, I should hope so, man. It's yeah, so, I'm tired of it, so man. played out. And I mean, to be honest, okay, we've probably seen our fair share of 3D films in the theater. I mean, to be honest, most of them that I've seen didn't do anything for me. You know, do you, did you guys ever see a 3D film in the theater and went, fuck, man. Hugo. The 3D, the 3D was amazing. Hugo. But like, did it did it yes. make your experience a lot better? Yes, because of the 3D. Yep, that's the only film I've ever seen that 3D is amazing. And I think everybody else who saw Hugo in theaters will agree with me on that statement. Okay, See? so you know, I've seen I've seen my fair share. You know, eight or nine of them or whatever. I remember um, when Avatar came out, everyone was just raging about the 3D and stuff, and I was like, okay, yeah. Well, I didn't think it was that great to be honest. And plus, the movie I thought was not that great either. But nope. Overrated. You know, but, but the thing, like, I kept watching all these 3D films, and I'm like, it's so gimmicky, man. There, there's nothing to it. It's not that great at all. So, you know, I don't know. See, my experience is I've only seen one 3D movie in the theater, and I actually had a fantastic experience with it, and I kind of liked the fact that it was in 3D. Uh, I think it definitely added to the film, and that was uh, Jackass 3D. Yeah, um, totally. That's, yeah. Another, that's another one that came into my mind. You know what? I actually watched that in 3D, too. That was pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's I think that's the uh, type of film you want to use 3D for. I do like the, like... <laughs> I like the idea of the gimmick of 3D better than I actually like the gimmick itself. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole, like, 3D when it was, like, in the in the 50s with, you know, the Creature from the Black Lagoon and shit. And then Which we'll the talk about and, later, right? Uh, Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah. You would talk about Creature from the Black Lagoon later? 
No. Oh, there's some Creature of the Black Lagoon news that you missed out on. I, damn. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Um, I think my fondest memory of 3D in a theater would have to be when I first watched the Piranha remake in 3D. See, that's and another film that it's it's a good use of. <laughs> it I was think. so it was so man. Me and my buddy were fucking pissing ourselves laughing over the penis part yeah like it looks so funny in 3d man because it comes right at you i was like <laughs> i was laughing i had to you know i will admit that was pretty damn funny it but has its place but it's it just overused and gimmicky now yeah um so i take it nobody's gonna be like pumped to see like freddy's dead in 3d no no you ain't gonna no. bust out the box set and watch freddy's dead in 3d i take it after the podcast no <laughs> I actually avoid like I really don't you know I have a lot of 3D films and I never even think about busting out those those red and blue glasses man no because it sucks and it gives you a headache yeah exactly so it just never crosses my mind like I said I can I can honestly admit that I've never watched I think I even said this when I was doing my Friday the 13th marathon that yeah, I've never did. watched. I've never watched part three in 3D because that of that sucks. reason. You should actually watch it. It's it's going to give you a headache afterwards, but it's kind of. I think you need to experience it at least once. I, I probably should actually, and then read after that. I'll watch Pork Chop 3D. You know, and I'll, just, I'll torture myself for 80 minutes or whatever. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, 3D. Um, <laughs> I don't really think. Uh, I don't think there's much more to say about 3D, but we're probably going to maybe mention it again because the second piece of news is uh, Halloween. It was called 3D. Who knows if it still will be. The That's Bloody Disgusting not. reported that at Cannes Film Festival, uh, one of their sources confirmed that uh, Dimension was – the Weinstein Company was moving ahead and pursuing – uh, continuing the Halloween franchise uh, with a new installment. Uh, later on, other uh, websites confirmed it also. And then finally, a little bit more of that news came when St Scout Taylor Compton tweeted, no longer, no more secrets, can't wait to jump back into Laurie Strode's mindset. So there's a couple questions here. One, are they really moving forward to it with it? I would probably say yes. And two, does Scout Taylor Compton actually have anything to do with it? Or does she just assume that she would automatically be cast as Lois Strode? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not giving away the end of H2, but how does her story continue? Well, that's the thing. Are they even, <laughs> like, honest, no, I don't like, even, I can't even remember the ending because there's like, isn't there like multiple endings to like each, both how, I don't even know where. Well, I, the first I I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, I just rewatched it. And I'm just like, what? I mean, she kind of dies. Well, all right. They ended the storyline. I mean, everyone that's listening to this podcast has seen the movie, let's face it. Well, um, <laughs> so they, they, but they ended that storyline right there. So, I'm interested does, to does see. Does that really what, matter, though? I mean, look at Halloween 2, then Halloween 4. Loomis was surely dead at the end of Halloween 2, along with Myers. Like, yeah, I, I mean, it is true, totally. It's, you know, I mean, I guess. I mean, we are something. removed from where people actually will go with that stuff now. I think people will be a little bit more outraged than they were back in the 80s when, when you try to continue stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, my thing is, or is it even going to be a sequel? Are they going to actually go with a, a continuing Rob Zombie's storyline? Or is it going to be something new? Is it going to be another goddamn remake? You know what? I really have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say anything until I read, start to read a little bit more about it. Because I mean, I mean, uh, if they do continue on with Rob Zombie's storyline, then, you know, Rob Zombie's going to get paid. <laughs> well, that character is not really there anymore. I don't know. I just don't. I, I don't really understand why they couldn't just do something kind of, you know, not like Halloween three, like the original Halloween three, um, but you do something with the characters. I don't know. I don't know. See, see I was thinking about is... this too, and I just don't know what they can because it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I think that that storyline is done. So maybe kind of continue. But have a film with Michael Myers in there because I think I don't know well, if we want that, that backlash that's again. The problem with this, dude, is that the the storyline is so connected with the family. It's about the yeah. the 
the Strud well, family and the, and the Myers family. So you're going to have to, if you're going to continue this story, I think you pretty much have to have either Lori or bring back the, or start and bring the Jamie Lloyd character in, you know? I say yeah. do that. Do that. Mm-hmm. But it would yeah. have to be played by Daniel Harris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. Um, so, yeah. Oh, man, uh, that would be fucking amazing to see a reprisal role. As like a grown up, Annie, so it's like weird. Like it would be like really weird. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna like say that'd be, that'd be Jesus so Christ. <laughs> I wouldn't. You know what? I wouldn't be against it. But <laughs> I just like to see her like back. And yeah, so I, don't, I don't think anyone's against Daniel Harris playing any character in a film. I mean, she's freaking beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. I, I think so. that I think that you. I I would rather see a continuation of the, not necessarily like Rob Zombie's vision, but pretty much like. I don't want it to be like another origin story and another, uh, you know, and Jamie Lee as a kid, you know, the that whole story again. I don't want to see that again. Well, let's have a Shamrock story with a Michael Myers. Let's just remake Halloween Six while we're at it. <laughs> why not just have? Why not just go a Halloween Three route? <laughs> no, that that would not fly, dude. I know that would not fly at all. It'd be another huge backlash, and you know, of course, we're not. None of us are stating that we. Uh, that we dislike Halloween three. I like Halloween yeah. three a lot, actually. I, like <laughs> I actually personally love that movie. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. But let's be honest, it, the, the, like <laughs> if that would happen, oh my god! Imagine the backlash. No, they can, they just they would never even consider that. Nope. Yeah. Michael Myers is what you're selling, yeah. and uh, I would love to see. You know, originally Todd Farmer, Todd Farmer, and Patrick uh, Lucier, who did like My Bloody Valentine and, and Jason X and shit. Um, they were attached to write and direct um, originally. There was a script and everything, and it was continuing Rob's uh, vision, kind of. But it was going to take him back to more like the dark shape character, but it was still continuing that storyline. So uh, who knows if they're just scrapping that idea altogether or what. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't really have a problem with that. You know, dark Michael Myers. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with this film being made at all. Maybe no. the 3D tagline can can go away. Um, yeah, I, I think it's like I think it's almost like inevitable though. Really, like when you, when you have a third film in a franchise, it's just you have to have a 3D. It's actually the only time that you should have it in 3D, probably. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you know, I'm completely down to see Myers on the big screen again, and I would, you know, it, this probably won't come out till you know 2016, probably. Mm, I don't think that long. You don't think? I can see next Halloween. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Not like this Halloween, but the Halloween of 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's good then. We'll have uh, a Jason film uh, in 2015 and uh, a Halloween film. And then you know by then they will have already greenlit like a sequel to the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. So then we'll have a sequel to that awesome remake. I just so. don't know what the hell you do with that, that story because nobody's going to want to see the Jack Earl Haley Freddy. Do you recast again or do you, you know what, as far as I'm concerned, I think you do. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm it's, down it's, for it's a recast, pretty, it's man. pretty damn convinced. It's, I mean, everyone knows that, you know, you know, Robert England is not coming back to play Freddy, so they're gonna. And, and nobody was happy with that Freddy, so I think, I think you should just get somebody who's not known. Just get just get a somebody who's not really known and go with that kind of guy. Well, that's the only way to cast those people with a like, lot of charisma. Yeah, I mean, or else you're gonna have Ben Affleck playing Superman. Ben <laughs> Affleck. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like you know, you just cast yeah. somebody unknown, and then people don't have that backlash. You're like, oh, it's Rorschach. Yeah, and you know, and, you know then, what, and that's dude? what everybody was saying, and it's like, yeah, I know. That's would that you sucks. like to see a new Elm Street if they recast? Because we're gonna have to accept that Robert England is not gonna play the role anymore. Nope. But make a like a Dream Warriors style story, like not the same thing, but kids in the mental hospital. I always would think that they should have did that if they was gonna do a sequel. For sure. I mean, you know, my thoughts on part two. It's not my. It's such a. It's such a weird. <laughs> It's such a weird con- – it's it's confusing <laughs> in more levels than Love one. It. You know? Awesome. Like part two is – I'll never forget like – oh, man. You know, even watching the you know the docu- or the Nightmare on Elm Street documentary recently and them talking about it, it's like them pointing out things 
where they're stating that they weren't doing purposely in the film. You know, and I'm like, wow, you know, they they didn't know what they were doing, <laughs> but it turns out this way. And it's like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And you could write talking. about that film. <laughs> man, it is such an interesting film <laughs> all around, man, what they did with that. But, you know, like I said, it's just uh, it's one of those films that doesn't. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I just find it doesn't work. It's going to grow on you. You know, it's going to grow on you more. I try to like it. I try to like it more and more, and it's just like, oh, man. But you know what? I still have – I don't hate it. I, I have love for it because it is part of my favorite franchise. Even as much as I dislike Freddy's Dead, you know, I still watch it because it's part of my favorite franchise. But yeah, you know what it is. So I take it we're all down for another Halloween 3D or Halloween th- – another Halloween <laughs> We'll see. I mean, honestly, hell yeah. It, I'm super dude, honestly, I didn't really like H2 too much. So, uh, uh, I fucking hated H2. And there's no way it's going to be like resurrection quality. So I think no, we're no, no, I'm not pretty worried. good I'm not worried about that. Man, H2 is one of those films, man, that I try to like every time I watch it. And every time I watch it, I find things yeah, you know, it's more, about, more about the film. And I, you know, I look at it, I'm like, oh, man, I don't like that now. I don't like that. I hate the idea of the whole beginning being a dream sequence. It bugs the shit out of me. Yeah, I know. We talked about that before. That does bug me too. It never used to bug me as much as it did after we talked about it. But it's just everything about the whole it, the whole white horse thing. I understand kind of where he was coming with this. You know, I did a little bit of research and stuff, and and uh, you know, and it still doesn't really make. It's still not that great of a storyline. <laughs> like you know, all. one thing even that it's not even executed hated yet. that I actually enjoyed was Laurie Strode. I thought it was interesting to make her this dark like pissed off character instead of like uh jamie lee's character like it made sense to me i th- think that that's the way the character would be after being through something like that yeah i think it's because you know the way it goes down in the first one is that she's you know it just basically made i mean the first one it just it's so violent too right you know i yeah. think it, it affected her even more than you know than the original i mean we can all probably say that rob zombie's remake is a lot more violent the original <laughs> Halloween, and I think it—I I think it's just kind of her, her character is a reflection of what she's seen and what she went through. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, it doesn't have to be shown on screen for us to understand that in the original one, but you know, I think that's just what they did with the character. I think it kind of works too, to be honest. You know, but she was kind of a fucking bitch in that movie, wasn't she? Yeah, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what if uh, what if they're like, you know what? Let's uh, let's let's do Halloween three. Uh, 3D, and uh, how about we bring back uh, the return of Busta Rhymes? Oh, <laughs> me and my friend were talking about this today. We were talking about Halloween. We we're talking about Busta Rhymes. <laughs> I would be down for LL Cool J returning, but fuck Busta Rhymes in Halloween, man. That's yeah, that's bad. That's bad news. <laughs> After that, another three, a third film. We have uh, VHS Viral. This is the third in the trilogy. Haven't heard about this one. Trilogy, uh, I it kind of was a surprising thing because I, I I I couldn't really I didn't really a hundred percent understand the news because this, I this is the guess... best thing. Honestly, okay, I got to break. Okay, this is the best thing about having a found footage franchise because last time I checked. 3D doesn't work very good in found footage films. <laughs> so VHS 3D, that's a no go. I like that. Right. Okay. Continue. Sorry, I had to break up. <laughs> okay. Um. So I wasn't a hundred percent. Uh. I di- I didn't really a hundred percent get the the actual news. I from what I understand, this film is either like done or like near done, uh, because they were like I guess they were I don't know like selling it or like taking bids on it or or something like that. I really didn't understand the whole thing behind it, but there is a still out. And the directors, uh, one of them was uh, Mar- Marcel um, something, the guy who directed Dead Girl and the D segment in ABCs of Death. Uh, and a couple of the other guys I, I, I'm not familiar with. No um, Adam Wingard or any of those guys, no Eduardo Sanchez. So n- nobody that's been involved in the previous VHS films. So these are all new guys here. Huh. I mean, honestly, I think in... It, that doesn't really worry me at all, having no. you know fresh people in there because it keeps the segments fresh. And yeah. 
I just but, wish they would have gotten maybe a couple more names that I was familiar with, so I, I had something to like really. I'd have to take it. I'd have to. T- did you did you do any research on the guys? Have they done anything else? Yeah, the like guard? one of the guys did like time crimes and extraterrestrial. One of the guys did the other side and dance of the dead. One of the guys did the apparition. Like dance of the dead, like the uh, like the zomcom. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> dance of the dead's a good movie. If that's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's that's what I, I've heard. It's actually one of the better Zomcoms ever done, in my opinion. It's pretty good. Um but yeah, you know, like I think having, you know, a lineup of these type of guys works, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm it, I'm totally cool with it. And it's called viral. Yeah, because VHS viral focuses on fame obsessed teens who unwittingly unwittingly become stars of the next internet sensation. So uh Take that as however you want, but the I don't know. I kind of really dislike the title. Oh, don't make it like a fucking YouTube, <laughs> like a YouTube thing, please. I'm just really don't like uh, the title. I hate when people take the numbers away from their their films. Anyway, it's silly to me. I, I don't really get it. Like, why not just call it VHS three? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's a good point. Just why not call it three D? Yeah, VHS three. Um, I mean, it's why not even call it VHS three D without the three D? <laughs> Just call <laughs> it that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, VHS. Uh, I really lo- love the the franchise so far. I'm I'm hoping that this uh you know an anthology found footage series can go on forever, and I wouldn't mind seeing one of these every couple years. Yeah, so far I've been really impressed with the first two installments. Um, I think I prefer the second one over the first one. I, I don't know why. I I really enjoyed the first one, but the second one just had... I think it was the last two stories in it that just really did it for me. It's no I, doubt that the second one is a stronger piece of you know, filmmaking in terms of like story and just segments. But I mean, you the have first to admit, one had though, a bigger you- impact for me. Oh, totally, for sure. I understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I just think that Jason Eisner's uh, short so far is still the best one. Is that uh, the uh, the? It's the alien. It, it's no, oh, it's the, the alien, alien one. Yeah, the that alien, shit it's is the last. Awesome. It's the last segment, <laughs> and yeah, the last segment in VHS too. And it's just, I think it's so well done. It's actually like legitimately creepy. Just really, really fucking good job by that Canadian, by that guy from the foreign land of Canada. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think that segment, the cult segment, and then the David Bruckner segment from uh, the first film, the uh, the creepy girl one, the succubus one, that yeah. one's uh, th- those three are the strongest. I still give it to the very first segment of the first VHS film. I think that one's definitely the strongest. But I don't think so. I think I'm my my favorite of the of the two films are are the one from the guy who did the raid redemption short. About the uh, the Asian cult and yeah, that's just, it. it's so solid, dude. But it's that's what I'm saying, though. Good. That's what I'm saying. Like the Asian cult one, and then the Alien one back to back might even be my two favorite ones too. And I think yeah, it's those just, are oh, really wow, good. so you know, crazy, man. But the first, the very first short in the first VHS actually kind of scared me. And when I say scared me, like I think people think like it scared you, like oh you're like I don't mean like hiding under the cover is scared. I, I mean like it just Strangers me- Strangers did that to me for some reason. Like I th- I think people misunderstand me when I say scared sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh come on man you just get the sand out of your vagina man. Just just face it man you pull the covers over your face. <laughs> just admit it. Just admit it. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's okay, man. It happens to me too, every once in a while. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have an imagination, guys. You got you gotta <laughs> put yourself in a situation, get your heart going a little bit, and that's that's what I like. That that's fun. Um, so yeah, VHS three. Um, we're all pretty much down with that. I, I so. Uh-huh. So how many directors were announced for that? Was there four or five? Um. There was one, two, three, four, and then like two of them. There's two more that are like kind of paired up, like so they'll be both directing it or something. Like so, there's a, gonna be short. So there's gonna be five shorts then. Okay. Probably four shorts and then the wraparound. Oh, that, yeah, that's that probably sense. what it is. Cool. Um, after that, Sci-Fi Channel has announced Town of the Living Dead. This is a 
unscripted series um, about people who uh, are trying to complete a independent zombie film. Um, <laughs> and this, I guess it's going to be like kind of a docu type thing where they're uh, follow this uh, group of filmmakers trying to finish a, a zombie film that they've been working on for like three, six years or some shit. <laughs> Wow, I okay. Yeah. <laughs> Crickets. So what so what are your thoughts on that, JP? Well, if SYFY wasn't attached to it, I might be like could be interesting, but I don't trust sci-fi, dude. I think they're if, ever since they changed their name from like how you actually spell sci-fi to SYFY, I've not really like trusted them. <laughs> I know, that's <laughs> the same do, way I- that's the same way I feel about WWF changing it to WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Just totally random, but no. No, um, I understand. You know what? That's a weird that's a weird note or a little tidbit of information there, JP. Changing the spelling of sci-fi really deeply affected the way you view everything that's presented on that channel. It, I think it wasn't, that, I, when I they think changed like, their I think there's something really deep here, man. No, when yep. <laughs> they changed their name, they also changed the kind of the way they presented it and did things. I remember when Sci Fi Channel used to actually show like good movies, and their originals would have been like um, films like uh, you know Tremors Three or something. You know, like they they, they seem like they actually Pumpkin put some... four. <laughs> That's even those kind of man. To be <laughs> honest, like they had they were a little bit more effort than like Mega Shark versus. Crocosaurus Rex or something like that stuff to me is just like Crocosaurus Rex. Rex. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's completely that, that, like that was the greatest title ever. That doesn't even make that, sense. I, I think that's a real title, dude. <laughs> Crocosaurus Rex. Oh, I think man, it's dude. something like okay, that. Okay, seriously, know. somebody link me to this. I'm picking this up right now. <laughs> no, but so so they fi- they went it. away from uh, going like a little bit more like trying to just make a film on a low budget to like. Let's just make the stupidest shit ever oh, with yeah. a low budget. <laughs> um, and but you know you but you have to admit though some of that shit. Yep. Mega, sh- out- Mega Sharp versus Crocosaurus. Oh, what the okay. fuck? Okay, awesome. Um, but you have to admit some of that shit is pretty damn entertaining though. I mean, in we, small you- doses. But when every week there's another fucking giant Mega Piranha on Sci-Fi <laughs> that you know they didn't have, it's there's no heart to them. Shark- That's the problem. Shark- because it, it takes them Sharknado fucking, three. It, it, it takes them like a day to make these movies because they just they go in there and they. They and that's my problem. There's no heart to it. Like they, you, they used to at least try to make like yeah, be like something. be like chiller. Yeah, like I mean, back chiller. in the. 2000 early 2000s like sci-fi was still going a little strong for me they used to also have like a lot of fun stuff like um they would do like hell Ra- they would have hellraiser i seen wishmaster for the first time on sci-fi like they actually played some like solid shit and like tales from the crypt episodes and um a lot of their actual original stuff was pretty good i mean now you still have cool stuff like face off and there, there is still some quality on there but i just don't trust them anymore i don't know what the hell they're trying to do sometimes yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm still laughing about that Crocosaurus <laughs> Rex that here, you here, said. Here's one called Mega Python versus Gatoroid. Yes, <laughs> Piranaconda. Oh, this is so good. It's so good. See, and I, of course, I don't they're think all they're like, that good though. And all, <laughs> I can just come up with that shit all day. Dino <laughs> Croc versus Super Gator. And they're all starring like '80s pop stars like Debbie Gibson and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, I can handle those things. I think they're fun sometimes, but it has to be in like really small doses. I think I think it's really oversaturated and I think they're like really fucking terribly made movies that they, they don't like you look at some of the bad movies of like the eighties and stuff. See see my thing with bad movies is I like bad movies when they're not supposed to be bad. When yeah. when people are actually trying. But moods and like shark bad. moods like shark movies though. Have you watched Sand Sharks yet, Moods? Oh, uh, like you know what? It's too like, I, deep to see. I was actually going to watch Sand Sharks last night when I got home, and I decided to watch that other piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, I think I might, you know, do some shitty Shark Weeks on my channel or something like that, and, and check out all these ridiculous shark movies that I have. Yeah. So, but 
I don't know, man. They, they but they put out so many of them. I can't even keep up with them, man. Like yeah, that's actually that's the I, thing. there's so many. I, I fucking laughed so hard one time. I was watching uh, ta- one of Tattoo Dorman's last. Uh, he doesn't make videos really anymore, but he he was on a shark kick too, and he showed this one called Jurassic Shark. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking started laughing so hard, man. There was another one that was like Ghost Shark. <laughs> I'm like, I have to see these. They're just so bad. Swamp Shark. Fucking so good. Yeah, they're uh, Raging Cajun Redneck Gators. <laughs> That's a real movie, dude. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's you so got, good. You got two headed two headed shark attack, Mega Shark versus Mecha Shark, Attack of the Jurassic Shark. You don't shark. need to name them all off, dude. I know, but this, <laughs> these are just some of the funny ones, JP. God, I don't even think they're that funny though. Like that's the thing. They Frank, were they would be funny if they was like once in a while, but they're Frank, all the time. They're just making up shit. Frankenfish. Oh, Frankenfish. Frank s- snakehead terror. <laughs> I, I actually remember liking Snakehead Terror. See, that was ba- that was that was a while ago. Snakehead Terror was a long time ago. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I think that the films that have heart, where people are trying to make a quality film and they end up just being terrible, like films. Those those ones are good to me. The ones that are just like, let's make it fast, cheap, and not good. Those ones aren't aren't fun. But that, that's the that thing. Much. But that is totally the difference between you know, a movie from the 80s and a movie from now, you know, made, that's made nowadays, is that back in the 80s, they couldn't just, like, throw a CG film together and be like, yeah. oh, yeah. You know, and they actually had to do, like, some practical effects and, like, actually have some type of production value to the film. You know, at least they were trying. Now it's, like, two fucking computer nerds sitting in their fucking bedroom <laughs> fucking drinking excessive cans of fucking Red Bull and they're making shark You're talking films. about me. That sounds like JP. <laughs> Actually, you know what I did right there? I combined both of you guys together in that story. No, I'm just joking. It's kind, of, it's kind, of, it's kind of true. No, but like I'm being serious. So like the, the, yeah, most of these things I, I are totally completely agree. being made on – like there's no production values to them at all. Like they're made on computers. And uh, it's ridiculous, man. You know it, what though? So some, so nothing pisses me off more than when somebody like sets out to make a bad movie. When somebody's like, I'm going to make the next bad movie. Like – Ah, oh, I, I I don't like that. I just it, it not, rubs me the wrong way. I'm pretty sure there's a movie actually called the like the worst horror film ever made. Yeah, there like, is. It's actually a I have that movie. movie. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> oh, I, I would like to know if it actually is the worst horror movie ever made. <laughs> Probably not. We will talk that, about those later. See, that sucks that you didn't get to watch it before this list because who knows? It could have actually been on your top five. I will report back to you next week on that. <laughs> nice. Some more sci-fi news, Sharknado 3. The sequel, the second one hasn't even came out yet, and they've already announced the Sharknado 3. And my prediction on Sharknado 2 is it will be nowhere near as popular as the first one was. They caught lightning in a bottle on that one. Right time, right place, all the stars aligned, and they just it was an unexpected like pop culture phenomenon. Yeah, Sharknado but... 2 is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But I also heard that... Uh... You know that Steve from 90210 is going to be in the movie again. So how could it not be as popular, man? He's got, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you know he he's such a good actor and stuff. And uh, no, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I can't I can't even be serious about it. Um, man, man, did that movie ever have bad acting? It was. So I, much I fun haven't to seen it still. I do own it, but I just haven't got around to it. Sharknado two premieres. Uh, well, Sharknado two, the second one. That's the little tagline on it. Uh, appears. Uh, will air on sci-fi july 30th and they have already announced a sequel sharknado 3 you know see when you when you said sharknado 3 i thought it was going to be one of those deals where like thanks uh thanks killing you know skipped its own sequel and went straight to part three you know which was actually clever if somebody else would do it it would no longer it was it was because you know in the in the in the third film they're like talking about how the second that's kind of the storyline i think it's pretty cool but but yeah how do you greenlit green light uh a part 3 when the second one hasn't even been made it, it, that's it's really getting ahead of yourself don't you think yeah it kind of is but you know what man i mean they can okay. just green light any anything because their budgets are so small that they're going to get some kind of return on it that's because all the dudes that are – the guys that are making these films are being paid in Red Bull and Ram. <laughs> Red Bull and Ram. And they're just getting better. What the hell's Ram? Ram for your computer, JP. <laughs> oh, Ram. <laughs> it's like um, Ram. 
<laughs> but you know, seriously, like, how is Sharknado three not in three D? That's my only question here. Because it's going to be a television movie. <laughs> what if they aired it, aired it in the like three D, and you just they, like they just left it on? <laughs> that would be, that, they should do that. See, that would make me totally. want to see it. I guess, I guess I guess the three D gimmick really doesn't work that well when you're playing it on TV, right? So you, your viewers would actually have to have red and blue glasses. Yeah, yeah that's probably not a good anyway, thing. Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, after that, uh, Legend of Hell House, which is a um, nineteen seventy three film, supernatural film, is being remade by Twentieth Century Fox. Oh, and, uh, yeah. It's not, That's you know, honestly, it's actually one of my favorite paranormal films ever made. And uh, I can't see this. I'm, I, you know what? I'm not going to go there because every time I hear remake, I'm just like, it, it's not going to be that great. But then I find myself being curious about watching it. And yeah. then I end up watching it, of course, or buying it. So I don't know, man. You guys haven't seen the movie, have you? No. Well, you know, it's. Legend of Hell House is coming out. Uh, Screen Factory is releasing actually later this year. Which Interesting. Is really so uh, I'm I'm really stoked for that because, like I said, it's probably one of my favorite paranormal, you know, investigative films ever done. Is that it's on actually, your top ten like ghost movies? Uh, top I five that we did on here. No, I, I didn't have it on there. No. Okay, so anyway, I, I think I should note that this has been rumored to be re- being remade since 2007. I think. And they also still don't have a writer, still don't have a director. So it's probably just a little update, but it's probably still one of those things that's stuck in development hell. Kind of sounds like it, man. It's seven years ago. Yeah. Um, After that, we have uh, Salem season two. So Salem was that witch show uh, that I was kind of excited for that uh, premiered on WGN. Uh, three episodes ago, this they're on their third episode, I believe, and it already got greenlit for a season two. And I still haven't got a chance to see it. I was kind of bummed that I missed the premiere. I forgot about it, but uh, I guess it's doing pretty well. It's a TV series on uh, WGN called Salem. Uh, yawn TV. I love TV. I know you do. You're I got to get around. I got to get around to seeing some of these shows, man. I. See, I personally won't watch things while they're airing on TV mm-hmm. because I'm super cool I'm like that. I've, I've got to wait till, you know, all the talk has died down and then I got to go buy the DVDs and go watch for myself and then I'll bring it up when no one else is talking about. It, they're like, you know, no, I'm just joking. But uh, no, I, I personally like to watch them on DVD so I can watch the whole thing in one sitting kind of thing, right? Yeah. I, you like to binge watch them. So do I. That's, I do. Yeah. It, Especially with TV like because – you know, like you know, I'd be watching The Walking Dead or something like that, and watch like season three in two nights. Yeah, you know, kind of thing, right? So, you know, it just you have to do it in sequence, man. I mean, obviously, everybody watches in sequence, but you know what I mean, in like in a compressed time era. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, I will so. say that uh, the po- the like teaser posters for that show I thought were some really really cool stuff. I posted a few of them in the in the group page. Uh, leading up to the premiere, um, I'm actually seriously curious about this show. Hmm. I actually don't really know anything about it, to be honest. I think it's one that's kind of slid under the radar. It's for me. Just from what I understand, it's just like a TV show about the Salem witch trials. Like, uh, probably, I think it might be set during that time, which makes it interesting if it's a period piece. So, if it is, is there like actually like witch burnings and stuff? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what what it is, what the show is. It takes place during that time. And well, that actually that actually sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, I, I, I'll report back on that when I get a chance to see it. Um, after that, we have a sequel. Forty years later, this is a uh, a trailer came out for "Don't Look in the Basement 2. Really? <laughs> I guess so. I thought well, it's already made. Su- I thought that movie was supposed to be remade, like the original one. But they just said fuck that, and then all I've of a sudden they're just doing. Uh, I thought it was I, I like a that sequel movie. to the Goosebumps story. Stay out of the basement <laughs> <laughs> when I first seen it. <laughs> no, don't go in the basements. Yeah, another one of those don't go in the don't films. Um, don't. I honestly think that movie's never had a decent release. Like the transfers Is on it public every public domain or something because I've seen it like every yeah yeah 
it's a public domain film for sure. So pretty much every cop or every print that you see of the film is just shit. shit. Um, I have a pretty decent one. I think the copy that I have might even be one of the better ones, but it's still like it's oh. like it's like White Zombie. VCI yeah. just put that out on Blu-ray today, like uh, a really nice edition. I heard. I'm curious to check it out. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah. After so, that, so, oh, so a sequel 40 years later. That's interesting. Yeah, that happens from time to time. Yeah, I mean, if you know, Psycho. <laughs> Wicker 22, Man. I guess it was 20, <laughs> Anchorman. <laughs> no, the, the uh, Wicker Man. Oh, I thought you said Anchorman. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it was like 10 years. There's no, yeah. Yeah, it's about 10 years. Texas Chainsaw 3D. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Here we Shut go. up. Um, I'm Steve... sure you don't. <laughs> That's for on later. That... That's for on later. That yeah. note, okay. On that note, that will actually get brought up, I think, more than once. Later Stephen on. King is made a new book called Bad Little Kid, which was uh, exclusively for like Germany and another country, I think. Um, and it already has got picked up for a film. It centers around a man whose life changes forever when he realizes that a mysterious boy is causing the deaths of all the people he loves. So, of course, uh, anything Stephen King, I'm always looking forward to when it gets turned into the two films. Think about how many amazing horror films or Stephen also uh Stephen King films and uh you can never really you know not want to see more of that yeah I, honestly every time I hear Stephen King stories are being adapted into a film it's always intriguing I mean you know as as much as we love his you know his horror films or his adaptations and stuff um you can't help but deny that he's done, you know, some of his other stories have been adapted that are just amazing. Stand By Me, I always think of. Because I, yeah. I, I remember seeing that film in the theater, actually, when it came out back in 85. With your dad, you told me the story. Yeah, and it's actually one memory I have of my dad from that era. And uh, But yeah, like Stephen King, man, every time you hear that one of his stories being adapted, you have to see it, man. Um, I'm curious, though, that that got picked up so quick because... Um, you know, with uh, uh, what is it, Doctor Death? Um, the sequel Dr. to the Sleep. shot, Doctor Sleep. Why did I say Doctor Death? I, what the fuck, Doctor Sleep? I'm surprised that has not been picked up yet. Yeah, well, am the I, thing if, is, I, it would be a sequel to like, well, there wasn't there wasn't there like a prequel to The Shining happening right now, like a prequel to Kubrick's The Shining. I didn't hear about that. I'm not actually sure. I'm pretty sure that's happening. But uh, so if you made like a top 100 list uh, of if anybody, if anybody made like a top 100 of their favorite horror films, guaranteed that like 5% of that list would be Stephen King films, at least. That's really random. You think so? You think that much? Yeah, dude, 5%. That's like five films. <laughs> um you don't think like The Shining shit, dude? There's so many <laughs> You're on gonna... a top hundred list. Yeah, I guess you know it's interesting. I never really, you know, I never thought of it like that. But I mean, I mean, I know I'm already a percentage of the way there because The Shining is actually in my top ten of all time. It actually is in my top ten. So. Yeah. Um. It. Uh. <laughs> Christine Carey. There's just it's, so many it's, good. Ones. It's funny, man. The the first horror movies I think of, you know, with Stephen King adaptations is right away is always Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. That's, that's one that would be in my top one hundred. Yeah. Pet Cemetery, Carrie and, you know, Christine are the ones that I always think of. And Silver Bullet. Because Gary Busey's totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's so many good ones. Yeah. But you know, so many so many good ones back in the day you have to be honest though i mean there's been a lot of stephen king adaptations like in the last you know 10 15 years that haven't been the greatest yeah there's there's a lot there was also some back in the day that wasn't i mean you look at like the, the his first three or something it was like uh carrie um the cronenberg one uh the dead zone and there was another one like salem's lot or something like some of those early ones were like awesome like yeah, the, like his first set, like five, I believe, were all really good. If if I go back and look, I liked all those early ones, man. I was even a fan of Firestarter for some reason, and you know, even to this day, 
I don't even own a copy. That's actually one of the only Stephen King adaptations I don't own is 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 Firestarter. Have you guys seen it? No. It's got a really young Drew Barrymore. I yeah, think it's I've right seen at, it. I've seen right it. At, right after she did E.T., I guess, somewhere in that time. But it's weird that I don't have that. But Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the were you speaking on like how a lot of the newer ones haven't been good. Um, but like the mist that there's one that you could go to that was like probably Amazing. one of the best of his yep. in general. And it was a newer one. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But I haven't, uh, desperation is another one that I have not checked out. Don't even check it out. <laughs> I, I know. I watched your review. I watched your review. Um, but, uh, yeah. I like you, know, JP. But I think there's, there's a few other ones too that I, I haven't really. Yeah. Gotten I, I always thought that needful things was kind of, kind of weak. A little bit, um, but he definitely has more watchable and good ones than Creep know, Show. No, not so well, good. We all, people always kind of forget Creep Show. Yeah, Creep Show. That's such a you know. To be honest, that's such an odd one to forget about, though. Really. Yeah. But I mean, it's. I think it's more the fact that he wrote the screen. He just wrote the screenplay for that, though, right? There, were, I think there was. I think he wrote like original stories in it. Like they weren't like from a book. Like a, I, I forget. I don't really know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Stephen King. That's awesome. After that, we have a little update on a, a possible Evil Dead Two. Basically, uh, Fetty Alvarez was. Uh, um, he was directing the latest episode of From Dust Till Dawn, the TV series, and I believe Shock to You Drop had a little interview with him. Um, and he said that Sam Raimi is still teasing Army of Darkness 2. He's uh, currently working on the script with uh, um, Ted Raimi, I believe, that his brother, Ted Raimi. Um, he also went on to say that Evil Dead 2 is still something that's definitely uh, will probably be done at some point, but they're just not rushing it. They want to pretty much, it'll come out when they find the right script, when they have the right ideas. They're not just going to put it out in a year to make money. They actually want to uh, create a you know flowing story with it. So that's, that's a good sign. I mean, it is a good sign, but I, I am a little curious on why that they're not kind of focusing more on it because I think that the Evil Dead. I hate saying remake because, you know, people kind of get offended when you say remake for that. But um, do they really? I don't know. Some people are like, it's our remake. And I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it did. I think it did so well, even within, you know, with the, you know, the lovers of the original series and stuff that um, I'm surprised that they're not pushing a little more. Aren't you, though? Like, aren't you a little more surprised that they're not kind of going after a sequel i mean they don't have to do it they can take their time with it but you know it seems like they're not even trying to focus their time on it at all yeah you know they're like they're they're basically just saying okay we're gonna we're gonna do this and we're telling you fans that we are gonna eventually do this part two you know but it's gonna be down the road and but we don't even know what we're gonna do before that That, yeah that's kind of off settling a little bit you know it's like what. I agree, but I think for one, I think it's because I think Sam Raimi is seriously. I think Army of Darkness Two is actually happening, and it's like kind of just being kept. Like, yeah, maybe we're doing it, maybe we're not. I think it's going to be like almost like a Don Coscarelli surprise. Here's Phantasm Five type thing, and well, um, I hope it's like that because that would totally make sense then, right? And yeah, and. I think he's just trying to uh, maybe he's putting a halt to Evil Dead 2 in order to like kind of uh, do the Army of Darkness thing. But also, I'm not surprised because, you know, Freddy vs. Jason came out, should have been a sequel. Friday the 13th, the remake came out, should have been a sequel. Like, it's obvious that there should be sequels when when they're successful, but it never happens almost. You never see a direct sequel. You literally, unless it's something like original, like a paranormal activity that just smashes you know the the walls down i don't really see any films just getting a sequel straight away anymore really i, I guess i kind of do like vhs and stuff but none of the previously existing franchises are, are are getting it it's all these newer films that uh do really well like vhs and uh abc's of death stuff like that uh like anytime like a new remake comes out or, or anything like that there's never a sequel right away anymore anymore yeah that's a good point i mean it sucks I guess, yeah. I guess 
I guess because that's what you want. It's like, all right, we got the remake out of the way. We got this origin story told. Now let's get on to the sequel stuff. And it never fucking happens. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's I think it's a little disheartening for somebody like me that grew up in the 80s and we had a sequel every fucking year for every major franchise. Yeah, there was a time, dude, when all Elm it was Street, the sequel, like you just knew that it was coming all the fucking time and and Elm Street I, Friday the 13th and Halloween like all had a film in the same year. Like that would have blown my mind if that would happen now. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like it's so crazy and I feel kind of blessed to be, you know, back in those days and you know kind of you know watching those. It, it's so it's so damn different now i mean i understand everything's you know it's just it's business man everything's business right so yeah but i don't really get it (laughs) because a lot of these films make a lot of money and you would think that they would be like all right let's let's do a sequel i mean from the fan perspective man we're just like okay put out the fucking movie you know but from their sake you know like they're trying to do this or trying to do that and you know i do understand that but i think a lot of the times it's way too many hands in the jar or whatever well, cooks in the kitchen <laughs> there's way too many cooks you, in the kitchen you know what that's a good point too because there's a lot more players in the game than there was it's 30 years ago 30 40 years ways. ago i mean there was a ton of people in the industry even those days but i think now you can honestly say that there's a lot more people involved in everything that goes on you yeah. know, in, in these type of situations, like because it's just it's so major, it's so major now. And I think that's the problem with studio films in general is there's just way too many people involved in productions. Like you look at the story of all the classics that did like super well, and it's always that tight knit group of people. Like Halloween is like the perfect example, where it was just a bunch of people making a film who were all friends and became friends, and now there's just so many like studio guys and producers. And and all these people that have an interest in the money and it's just way too many people tugging and pulling different directions totally agree totally agree i mean for fuck's sakes man people walk onto a set nowadays and they're like oh you know what's your name oh my name's fucking johnny well you're gonna be assistant director to the uh blah 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 <laughs> yeah. like holy shit dude and then and then all of a sudden five minutes later he has his own seat with his yeah. title that doesn't even fit on the seat because it's so damn long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. It's ridiculous. But, yeah. I personally love the first uh, Evil – not the first. The, the fucking remake. I love that one. And I would love to see a sequel. And Army of Darkness 2 I would like, but I almost don't like that it's called Army of Darkness 2 instead of like Evil Dead 3 or something because – I don't know, man. Like, Army of Darkness was cool and stuff, but it's way too fucking slapsticky. But Army of Darkness... For what I would want to see today. Technically is Evil Dead 3. It's just set in a different, you know... Yeah. But... but Well, then they should yeah. call it Evil Dead 4. <laughs> Dude, it's kind of confusing. I know. They should I call know. it, like, Ash. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious to see what they do with it, though, because the one cool charm about Army of Darkness that you guys could probably agree with me is the is the effects in that film. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, like how they made that film is just it's it's so fucking hilarious, man. And it fits so well with the humor, right? And I'm curious to see what they do with it now. Yeah, but know? I don't are, want another Are they going to use like the man. like stop motion animation and stuff like I would, gonna... that would be awesome, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> but that's that's what I'm saying. I doubt that we're going to you know see anything like that, but I don't know. Yeah, who knows. Who knows? Um, we'll just see when that that develops, if it develops. Uh, after that, we move to like DVD and Blu-ray announcements and shit, and video on demand stuff. IFC Midnight picked up two films. Uh, one is Witching and Bitching, which kind of got some decent reviews. It's a movie about a couple people uh, in that stole some gold or some shit in a Spanish city and is cursed by some witches. <laughs> it's called Witching and Bitching. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I just found that so comical. I wasn't expecting that title to come out. It's just awesome. Yeah, see but, that one to me, man. I'm just like, but I it's about I'm gold. Tired of it's got the gold in it though. Comedies, man. The 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 horror comedies, the comedy horrors. I like horror comedies. I don't like the comedy horrors so much. I just they turn out to be good sometimes, but I don't know, man. I just never get excited when I hear the announce announcement of them. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Uh, and the second film is, oddly, it's called Beneath. 
<laughs> this film uh, is about this one sounds right up my alley actually is it about a giant fish no a crew <laughs> of coal miners become trapped 600 feet below the ground after a dis uh, a collapse as the air grows more toxic time runs out Ooh, they slowly descend badass. into madness and begin to turn on one another that that's badass. directly like, up my alley sounds like the divide um, so yeah, these both uh, hit VOD. One of the the witching and bitching hits VOD June thirteenth. Or the and... first, or the first fucking five minutes of uh, uh, my bloody Valentine. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> beneath hits VOD June twenty seventh. DVD will follow afterwards. Uh, so, Synapse. Oh, so I'm okay. assuming that that movie right there is you know an underground cannibalistic film. Yeah, probably. Which. Um, it's. I just love small group of characters in a small location, and it's about them fucking turning on each other, madness, and all that shit. Sounds great. Does sound fucking good. Honestly, it sounds like it should have been done like 600 times by now. <laughs> it's kind of a simple <laughs> plot. Uh, yeah. After that, Synapse Films uh, picked up uh, Curtains, and they're putting it out on Blu-ray July, 18th, uh, July 8th. Yep. Oh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Curtains is a Canadian film that should have been released years ago, but I cannot believe that Synapse picked it up because they do, in my opinion, they're one of the best out there. They put out the best shit. So nobody cool, agrees cool. with no nobody agrees with me on that one. I don't really have too a pricey lot of for my films. blood. They are yeah. really pricey to me. Totally pricey, but man, I tell you, kind of worth it though. I mean, well, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but man, the releases are real good, real good. So I'm expecting nothing but gold from this one. Continue. MPI uh, picked up uh, Dan Curtis's Dracula. Uh, this is a 1974 film, and it's going to hit Blu-ray May 27th. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> I didn't realize that was it, but that is it. Okie dokie. All right. So, can I can I uh, ch- charm in on one piece of news? Yeah, yeah. I must okay. have missed something. Yep. May first, DreamWorks hires writers to bring in the Prey remake. So, the Prey is a French IFC midnight film, and I guess they're remaking it. And huh. the, and the guy who wrote the Woman in Black is writing the screenplay. Huh. So, so they're remaking another fucking. So and and what, what year did the prey yep. come in? Come out in? 2011. Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, a foreign <laughs> film that needs to be remade within two years or whatever after. So. Just yeah, let's hope be... I saw the devil doesn't get remade. I don't know, dude. I don't. I, I we've talked about this before yep. with uh, old boy and stuff. I have kind of a different opinion on it. I think that it yeah, helps but... people see the original. I don't really All mind right. it so much. All right. All right, let's get into the question of the week here, guys. What's so funny? Uh, it's the question of the week is funny. To uh, me. All right, all right. This week's question is the top five worst horror films that you've ever seen, which is a very fun and interesting question. <laughs> I know JP's number one already, but that's – and you guys probably know my number one. I don't know what Newt Mood's number one is. Uh, I'm going to either guess um, – I'm going to guess Cherry Bomb is on that list. And, <laughs> um, and that movie that he watched with the angel on the cover, the black, the woman black with like, it has like a white cover with a girl on the front in black. You know what you're on time about moods? Yeah. But, uh, uh, okay, but, you know, first. Oh. Before you, I know you're about to uh, like apologize or something, but um, before you guys like actually read the the, the people's list, I just want to say all of you people out there, not all of you, but most of you people should feel very, very fortunate because you guys have not seen a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I've seen okay. my share. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. His lists were blowing my mind. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Mr. Moods. Oh, fuck, man. I, I was fucking laughing at some of these lists, man. Like, you would not believe. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, first off, for Mood Swings here, I, I just want to apologize to Dubby for not reading out his uh, uh, his top five 
uh, Full Moon films. I don't know how I overlooked it. It happens. I, I do apologize, buddy. Um, it did seem like he was a little butt hurt, you know. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I am. He apologize. handled it like a pro. <laughs> Just bugging dummy. We're all cool, man. No, we had a good talk about it, but yeah, that I mean, that was that was inevitable. Really, that was probably going to happen one time, but I'm going to blame YouTube for it, though. I didn't. It wasn't there. So, okay. um, but anyways, yeah. So everyone's uh, top five list, top five worst horror films that you have seen. Uh, I was really looking forward to this. I was hoping that more people were going to answer this question because, you know, there's just, there's a lot of bad movies mm-hmm. out there. So, uh, Andrew Cripps, uh, his number five was Jaws four. <laughs> that made me laugh. Actually, <laughs> that movie really is fucking shitty. Um, number four is see to Chucky. Which I knew was going to make this list. Not his in specific, but I knew that was going to be on some people's list for sure. Honestly, that one kind of surprises me too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. Yeah, I don't think it's like the worst. um, Oh man, I I don't know. Like these lists, like they seriously did like blow my mind because a lot of these films are actually like they they are actual films. Some of the ones that I've seen, I don't even think you can classify as films. (laughs) (laughs) Me neither. I think people but answer like, the questions a little different, though. I, I mean, maybe it's just what they've seen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that which was, is that, totally that, fine. That, but man, you guys has, have not really seen a lot of bad movies. Some of you guys. Okay, so number three, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre four, which you know most people do dislike that film. Number two, House of the Dead, which that's an interesting. That one's choice. that one's like kind of like in the running. I, I would say like that one's pretty bad. That is a bad film. And number one, Machete Joe. I've actually never seen that movie, but I've seen that it's It sounds bad. I have it. I haven't watched it, though. I heard that it's, you know, yeah, I've heard really bad things about it, so. Um, Sorry. Uh, I'm just looking for everyone else's. You know, YouTube is just being really random lately. As you scroll, it seems to change things. Okay. Uh, Dawn's Bombs. Number five, Leprechaun 4. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it totally made me laugh uh number four demonic toys two yeah that's a that's, pretty damn bad one bro yeah it is man that's a fucking terrible movie uh and then yeah number three jason goes to hell <laughs> jp <laughs> he can't even talk he can't even talk he's so pissed off right now uh number two halloween resurrection hmm. and number one seed of chucky hmm. that's See, a hate on seed of chucky you know, know. Man, you know, guys know that I don't like Resurrection at all. I don't, I don't like Seed of Chucky at all. But they're not, when I say they're watchable, all, they're they're watchable movies. They're um, to me, like you know, this is obviously a personal list. Um, I don't; these films don't even cross my mind when I think worst films ever that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. But like you said, man, you know, it's all in what people have seen, and maybe they made, maybe they made these, you know, lists like how I made my list of what I own. Mm-hmm. You know, so okay, so Martin VP, number five, Lake Placid three. <laughs> Lake Placid four is worse. <laughs> <laughs> the final chapter. Okay, uh, the Sick House, um, number three, Hidden three D. Uh, Ooh, that movie that, is pretty bad. That now that's see these li- this list seems pretty bad to me. Like these ones seem like legitimately like were like terrible films. Yeah, Martin knows his shit, man. He's cool, dude. He's a cool dude. Uh, Number two, Coffin Baby, which I have never seen. Which and, anytime I've never seen it or heard of it, that probably means it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. And number one, Vampire Effect, also known as the Twins Effect, which I have also never seen. But I will take your word for it, Martin VP, that those are shitty films. Yeah. I like that. Uh, let me uh, – we got Lost Witch. So we got Adrian here. His number, uh, his number five is Lost Boys three. Yeah, right. Lost Boys two was even worse. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I I hated Lost Boys two. Lost Boys I, three is actually okay, man. I actually didn't mind that movie either. That's funny. Okay, it is. It this is. This one I can't even fucking wait. Texas Chainsaw three D. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, I, it blows my mind that this could even be considered one of the like worst films you've ever seen. Like. It just, I don't get, I just don't even get it. For one, it's not the worst in the franchise. Okay. So that, that alone should make it not in the top five. And for two, like, there's, are you telling me there's absolutely nothing in that film that's like, like, I, I, 
there's nothing that you like nothing at all there's you know (laughs) it's like okay i understand if you don't like it but at least it has some okay lighting it has some okay direction it has some okay um you know kills at least you know something it it, like it has things to it Mm. i don't i just i'm a don't understand it at all i mean yeah i mean there's certain things about the movie that are is completely outrageous man the cotton like you know obviously the continuity issues Dogs, don't even start on continuity issues that is the silliest argument i've heard for the while the movie's bad but it is true though i mean if you're if you're, the, if you're yeah, such a big con- fan of the first one for sure there's there is issues with the you know the time um isn't but there, there is continuity a, there is issues a, with like every fucking film every sequel though like yeah, look at friday just, the 13th yeah, like jason is so a kid great, in the though. first film and but then he's so, a he's an adult in the second film i know like, but what? This, but this one's so blatant though man like it all of a sudden it's in the fucking you know no, it's the, not that blatant because it's just it's it's literally t- like it's dates that's what's wrong it's not like it's just yeah. dates it's numbers that's the yeah. only thing that's wrong but that's exactly what my point is but anyways you know, um, we can go on forever about 3D, man. <laughs> I don't, I honestly don't hate the movie, but, um, number, uh, shitty 3D though. Number three is a nightmare on Elm street remake, uh, which I think we can pretty much all agree. I mean, that movie sucks. Um, it's still number, not even close to the worst film I've ever seen though. <laughs> but you know, uh, number two is paranormal activity Four. never seen it. And then he just basically gave up all hope when he was doing this list and said, fuck it, the rest of the paranormal activity film <laughs> <laughs> for number one. So, that's funny. Scotty uh, that, ain't going to like that one. That, that's actually really funny. Uh, our boy Zach, Movie Collector 666. I think Zach's list was pretty legit too. And man, I fucking laughed when he wrote this. He goes, I swear I'm not trolling, but here's my top six worst horror films. <laughs> Don't hate me, fellas. Number number six, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. That's a pretty bad movie, dude. <laughs> it is. It's a terrible film, totally. Now this fucking blew my socks off. I actually was like, "Wow." Um, number five, the original. I spit on your grave. Oh wait, yeah, that one was kind of. A, you know, man, I don't, I don't know. I like, it's, I love that movie, man. I, I don't I, love it. I like. I don't even like it. It's it's okay, but it's definitely nowhere near the worst <laughs> that I've no, seen. I mean, I hate saying that I like rape movies, but you yeah, know, it it is what it is. You guys get it. Uh, number four, Manhattan Baby. I remember Zach talking about this movie. Oh uh, fuck, it. Manhattan Baby is just faulty. <laughs> Def, not his best work. I agree. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh the Blair Witch Project. Oh wait, th- this was not the legit list that I thought of. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what is up with you guys, man? Blair no, Witch because... is a shit. It's no, like because... in my top ten favorite. <laughs> yeah, he because he there was a couple films on here he knew that we that we all loved. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right? And then so the Blair Witch was, you know, obviously kind of a joke on you not a joke but yeah know. it's totally fine like i don't want to like i don't mean to offend anybody i think these lists are just hilarious because they're so much different than like my thought process but you know like the blair witch project is literally one of my favorite movies so it's hilarious to see that like somebody thinks it's one of the worst movies <laughs> yeah interesting uh this one this one was <laughs> Zach? Um, he knows how much I love this film. But number two was Poultry Guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Like I Poultry saw that Guys too. too. It's probably yeah. my favorite trauma film that I've seen. I'm such a big fan of the movie, and I, I just I was blown away. And then number one was Witch's Brew, which I've been curious to actually watch. That's the guy. Um, that's the other movie from the guy who did President's Day. Yeah, and I've actually heard decent things about it. Like I was really surprised at that. He even said to me after he watched it, he's like, "Man, I'm going to send you this movie <laughs> 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 just so you can watch it." And I'm like, "Awesome." Uh, next up is Dubby Doubles. Dubby, we are reading out your list this week. So, uh, but I, I have to say though, he was laughing about our Survivor Big Brother talk. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty funny. Fucking um, Survivor rocks. Okay, number five is the Fog remake. That's uh, that's a pretty bad one. That is a shit. pretty damn bad one. That's like in the two to three rating range. Uh-huh. So it's it's a qualifier. Number four, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Why? And we, why? we just why? We, we, we just covered this again. Yes. Uh, number three is the Seed of Chucky. 
which we also just talked about. I cannot about. believe that the Seed of Chucky got placed so many times. Uh, number two, the Wicker Man remake. It's interesting. Um, and number one, Paranormal Activity. Yep. <sighs> That's yeah, crazy. That is uh, very, very interesting. And I think that is actually going to do it for the list. I hope I didn't miss any. But uh, like I said, there, there might actually... be some on the actual thing. Did we look at all on the Facebook page? Was there? Did, I... Do you remember if anybody posted theirs? I didn't see anything. Remember, I told you to keep it open. Because yeah, I, I do have it open, but I didn't. I didn't know if there was or not. So yeah, I don't think there is. I didn't see I, any. There actually might not be. Um, but yeah, it was actually kind of. I was actually kind of. You know, I, I just thought there would be more for that one, but. Yeah. Honestly, dude, you remember last week when I was like, nobody better ever put Texas Chainsaw 3D on their list. I legitimately believed that nobody would. Like, I was like, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Like, I did not <laughs> expect it at all. I was like, what? Nice. Nice. <laughs> all right. So uh, our top five list. JP, you want to go first? Okay. I'll go first. Um my number uh, five is George Romero's Dead Time Stories. <laughs> now, granted, I could have actually put a couple other films on here that are like these crappy shot on video movies that I've seen throughout time that are like, you know, seven, uh, like 55 minutes long and stuff that are literally like some of the worst movies ever made. But I decided to just stick the ones that were actually like mm-hmm. movies. possible to grab, not in like a 35,000 pack. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh do they actually have f- those thirty five thousand movies in a one pack <laughs> they probably fucking I, do on so. 30 dvds <laughs> fucking, yeah, yeah on and, DVDs. and it's all for the low price and the affordable price of nine dollars and 99 cents <laughs> yeah um right. number four was uh demonic toys 2 Oh, you actually had that on there? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's fucking I, I funny. I hate Demonic Toys too. It was such a disappointment. Um, number yeah. three is Six Degrees of Hell. Has anybody seen that? That's the one with Corey Feldman? Yep, I have. Yeah, it. and it is so awful. It is a I terrible narrative. It's just not that. even a it's not even a cohesive story. Um number two is a film that I actually just watched recently. It's called uh Mala Carne. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is uh, some like Spanish film <laughs> or, or like Argentina film, something, something. I, I don't even know. Uh, it's it's pretty damn bad, dude. <laughs> um, and then of course number one is Beneath the Mississippi. I want I just Dubby and Lost Witch and whoever else had Texas Chainsaw 3D on their list. Go watch Beneath the Mississippi and tell me that 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 Texas Chainsaw 3D is a bad movie after that. <laughs> Well, not a bad movie, but the worst movie. Tell me, tell me, it's in the top five worst when you watch something like Beneath the Mississippi. Hey, man, it's just all personal. Yep. You know? No, it's all experience. The, like, obviously, they have not seen like the quality of films that we have seen because they they weren't showing up there. Like, when you have stuff like Cedar Chucky, there's no way that you've seen like the shit that that, that is at the very bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, Jeremy, you up? Sure. My number five is Leprechaun Four, of course. Wow. Uh, this is this you know, we've already discussed Leprechaun Four. So, number yeah. four is a little known, little unknown sequel called Pork Chop Two, which is absolutely fucking horrendously bad. And the only saving grace in it is a cameo by Sean it's C. Cool, Phillips dude. and his family. So, if you guys actually know me and you know my personality. If me saying that actually means something <laughs> towards the film, that that's the only saving grace is cool dude, cool dude, and his family. The narrative, narrative is fucking awful. The acting is fucking awful. The movie is shit, and the yeah. f- and Pork Chop One is shit as well, but it's not as shitty as Pork Chop Two. And I can't say about Pork Chop Three because it's out of print and it's hard to find. But Moods has it, so maybe Moods could watch it in china yeah. one day <laughs> to be fucking honest man i still haven't watched it yet because it's only in 3d mm-hmm. i have some glasses sitting around for it but i have to actually bring myself to watch it but i haven't done it yet because pork chop one and two were so fucking shitty yeah. i'm like it's got to be the worst trilogy it might even be the worst trilogy ever made i swear it's fucking horrendous i know it's there's so a, bad i know there's a 2d version like out there somewhere but it's like uh it's fucking horrendously bad. I know you can get it on Amazon, but yeah. Um, 
next on we have three is paranormal activity uh <laughs> yeah we've talked you guys should feel very happy that you guys have not seen bad movies number two clown hunt <laughs> clown hunt which is a little movie that is fucking horrendous uh it's about uh uh, instead of hunting deers and games, people hunt clowns. Um, it's really bad. The narrative sucks. There is no narrative. It's fucking horrendous. If you guys see it and read the back, don't buy it because the movie's absolutely fucking terrible. And number one <laughs> is shitty. and number one, of course, is Bloody Homecoming, which is no Cube Two up in there. Cube Two's worse than Paranormal Activity. Come on. Hmm. I don't know. Paranormal activity. Dude, would you rather sit there and watch Cube 2 again? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, nobody it, can, nobody maybe can honestly die. say after watching Cube 2 once that they were like, yeah, I can watch it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not going to happen. But I don't know if I could sit through Paranormal Activity again, though. I honestly, It's an actual honest, movie. Like, yeah. like Cube 2 is like – I don't even know if you can call that anything sometimes. This summer, this summer – I told, I think I told JP this, but this summer I'm going to buy all five Paranormal Activity films because I don't own any of them, and I'm going to watch them all in a row. No, let's do a I, show. I really, this is what I like to do to myself. Yeah, let's I do like a to show on it. torture the shit out of myself, man. Mm-hmm. And I, I fucking, we should, we should. Fuck and it, I'll be like, show. damn, this is a pretty fun show. <laughs> 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 Seriously, oh dude, they, I, don't, I just don't even, I don't, like, what, what makes them so bad? They're boring. Is that is that it? Like, well, I can't speak for part two through five because I've well, never I seen can't them, either. But. <laughs> but I mean, the first one, like, yeah, it's a little boring. It's a slow burn, but there's stuff happening. It's not like it's nothing. Oh, there's happening. slow burn films. Yeah, and they're then there's Fucking paranormal activity. <laughs> um, hey, moods. The next pork chop film is called Pig Girl, and it's about like pork chops, like daughter or something. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what? I, I just so have to buy it. <laughs> That's brutal. Oh, All that's right, guys. Uh, <laughs> so I did my list. Uh, I made this list based on what I had in my collection. Mm-hmm. And also I didn't put any remakes in, remakes in there because when I was a fish, when I was initially doing this list, I had like three remakes in there. And I was like, okay, that's just Are you re- serious. I did. I, I was like, oh, OK, seriously, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And I'm actually going to go into my collection and find some of the worst films I've ever fucking seen. And I actually own these. Yeah, I own Uh, all mine. Yeah, I own all mine as well. Okay, so number five is a movie called Insecticidal. It is absolutely (laughs) fucking horrendous. Dude, okay, the effects in this film are beyond hilarious. Like, it's actually so bad it's bad, though. Like, oh, I I can't even. It's bad. It makes you gag. It's so bad. (laughs) Number four is a movie called Mot- <laughs> Motorhome Massacre. Oh, I have that one. Oh, God, this movie, man. Okay, the characters what? alone just make me want to gag. It has some of the worst dialogue and characters, <laughs> but it's also so predictable in the way you're like, can you pick up the killer halfway through the film and then and then this big reveal at the and end, you're like, I fucking knew it was... You want to know the funny it. thing? It has three and a half stars on Amazon. <laughs> what the fuck? Motel, Motel, I mean, Motorhome Massacre is so... It's torture. See, dude. these what? films torture. seem really bad to me. Like it's they seem torture. like they would have actual like technical flaws, like, uh, like fucking watch bad sound too, and man. bad fucking acting and bad everything. Oh, and these movies are shot really bad too. Yeah, and, like uh, that. That's when I. Okay. That's when those start to get like ones, like one out okay. of tens and stuff. Oh yeah. So number three is a movie called The Bagman. <laughs> this is a fucking real, real low budget slasher with some absolutely horrendous acting the effects are terrible it's shot brutally the story is so bad it's so bad and it's just there's nothing to offer there's no redeemable qualities about the whole film it's just it's basically on the same level as as motorhome massacre it's just so fucking bad uh number two is beauty queen butcher (laughs) now this movie right here is that a shot on video this is a shot on video film that is completely overdone and what I mean by that is that this movie runs like two hours long. <laughs> and I, I fucking shit you not, dude. The first hour of the film is like the whole beauty pageant dealing with this main character. They show the whole fucking thing. <laughs> all the stages, all the fucking – it's so friggin' boring and bad. And then when the shit starts going down, you want to see some of the worst effects and kills ever mixed in with the worst acting and editing. 
oh, dude, this shit is just beyond bad. It's so fucking bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's like funny. some of the ones that I have on my list also have like bad editing that actually oh, make the film it's like fucking, it's unwatchable. So bad. It's so bad. And the the worst film I could find in my collection when I was going through this, man, is a movie called The Summer of the Massacre. Now, <laughs> it's not the newer one called Summer of Massacre, uh, that one released by Vicious Circle Films. This is a UK film that was released a few years back, and it's it just has basically a couple extra does in the title. <laughs> yeah. But this movie is it's a, obviously a slasher film. But man, I fucking shit you not, dude. It has the most irritating kills and scenes ever. Like this killer is running around so aimless, aimlessly, and and like screaming and doing all this. Shit. It's it's so irritating to watch. I I had to finish it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Does, I don't know if that makes any That's sense. That's the same thing. With it was so bad. I couldn't fucking turn it off. I was like, I have to see the rest of this movie. It oh, it's a midnight releases? Yeah, it's fucking yeah. bad, dude. It's so bad. Like, I just, I honestly couldn't even believe it. And then, I, I shit you not, man, uh, that new YouTuber, um, Horror Man Fan, he fucking he actually showed this in one of his videos and he was even talking about it being like the worst movie he'd ever seen too. And I was like, I know, I know exactly <laughs> where you're coming from, man. <laughs> it's like, bro, bro. It's like I even I commented on it. I said, dude, I've seen that movie. It fucking sucks so bad. And he even commented back to me saying, I can't believe you've actually seen this low budget UK film. Cause he's from the UK. And he's like, no one's ever mentioned this movie. And I'm like, unfortunately I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. But anyways, that's my list, and yeah, those are really, really bad movies. Totally, I, it's it's one of those things where if you, some of these films are so goddamn bad that you can't really even call them completed films. Clown sometimes. Hunt, watch Clown Hunt. Like Beneath the Mississippi, literally has missing dialogue, like missing the sound actually drops, and it's <laughs> not my copy; it's the actual film. They left it go. There's <laughs> it's bad editing. There's it's there's just... blurriness. It's it's literally a a amateur <laughs> film that, that is just complete insanity that it's even on disc. It, that's just so bad. This is so bad. I love it. It's great. Like cack crackling dialogue sometimes like missing dialogue dro dropping sound it's it's fucking nuts dude and that is why i can never put something like texas chainsaw on my list <laughs> <laughs> i love you guys even though you you hurt my feelings you know you guys actually really did hurt his feelings he's <laughs> yeah. super butthurt right now he's like no i am not I'm, just him. I'm, we were you almost not friends anymore just almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for next week quest next week's question, um, we are gonna do a very, very simple one. Maybe it's maybe it's not that simple for some people. This was actually gonna be the question from last week. And then we changed it up right in the middle of the episode because it was just too good to pass up. Uh, it's gonna be your top five found footage films. Ooh. Of all time. Um, yeah, found footage films for me, I'm not, I, it's hit and miss with me. I always say I'm not the hugest fan until I watched one recently. You guys would probably know what that is if you watched my videos. Uh, this shit blew the, me right the fuck out of the water, man. Mm, it's going it to make my list. It's going to make my list. Sure. It was one of the best fucking movies I have seen. And it's, it, it was just so good. I it's good. Really, really impressed with it. And, you know, you know, and you know, we have to do it. Top five found yeah. footage films, and I know it's not everyone's favorite thing, but I think this will be an interesting list because there's quite a few. See, see, oh. my thing with found footage is I don't think I think the people that don't like them, it's more of a, a an actual like physical like like reaction to the to the found footage. Like they can't handle it. Yeah. Um, me personally, I have no beef with found footage. I have no beef with remakes. It, it all just depends what kind of film it is. Maniac was my favorite film of last year. It was a remake. You know, Blair Witch Project is one of my favorite films of all time. It's a found footage. It just, what does the film offer? That's what I go by. It doesn't matter what kind of film it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, as much as I always stress that I'm not the hugest fan of found footage films, the films that are going to be in my list, I think, are really great films. Yeah, you know? and I think there is a lot to offer in it, but I do think that the found footage, you know, kind of sub uh, genre, whatever you want to call it, 
it has been a little oversaturated. I mean, I think there's been a lot out just there like that zombies. just really don't work. Oh, well, I mean zombies, of course. And vampires course. a couple years ago. Everything of, gets its time to yeah, be oversaturated. But found, it, it just seemed like every time I turned around, it was like, you know, uh, I click well, on a movie. I click on a movie on, yeah, on fucking uh, Netflix or whatever, and the fucker would be found footage. I'm like, Jesus, man. <laughs> yep, now you it's going to be like that with VampirCon, man. We're going to start seeing VampirCon versus Mega Shark. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vampircon kind of is one of those mega shark things. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, it's. I mean, it, if it's, it's not mashup. CGI'd, if it's not CGI'd, man, I don't know. I can roll with it. Okay. So. Okie dokie. Any yeah. more like mood swings before we get into the, the their questions? Uh no, no, that's going to be it for that. Okay. Uh, so Tyler asks, what film? do you find yourself revisiting the most? Uh, for me, uh, does it have to be horror? I, I would, I mean, I would I'm pretty sure he meant like horror. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, uh, films that I do revisit on the regular, uh, I know JP probably already knows my answer, but return of the living dead. I watch pretty much weekly. <laughs> I, want, I know that movie like where for where it's not so returned bad. to, like you just not return to Newcomb High. No, well, yeah, I went through that. I watched that movie like six times in one week, but hasn't been uh, long enough. No, but like Return of Living Dead is a film that I always go back to watching. Um, another one that I, I revisit at least once a month, and I, I ever since I've got the Blu ray, I watch at least once a month is Intruder. Um, I love that fucking movie, man. It's so, it's so good. Um, but yeah, and in, actually another film that I ever since Screen Factory put out the Blu-ray, it's probably one of my most wa- besides the Terror Vision and the Video Dead uh, release. It's probably my most watched one, and, and it's The Fog. Huh. Um, I watched The Fog probably probably the second most out of the you know out of the Screen Factory collection. But you know those are films that I I mean there's lots that I revisit a lot, but Return of Living Dead is the film that. I literally could throw on and watch for the rest of my life. I just, number, I, I never get sick of it. My number one is also Return of the Living Dead, but Return of the Living Dead, Elm Street 3, and like five of the Friday the 13th are the films that I actually, if there was a little counter that, you know, put a little tick mark every time I watched it, those those are the films that would have the highest uh, count mm-hmm. because actually, I watched actually, those the most. Actually, I did forget one. I, I don't know how I, I don't know how I forgot this, but American Psycho is another film that I watch consistently. I just – I love that movie. Uh, for me, For me, I would say – I was going to say Ed Wood. Uh, I guess it's based on a horror guy, but Ed Wood, fucking fantastic. I watch that movie probably once a month. Also, Tim Burton. Um, Child's Play, of course. I've, you know, I've, I've come back to a lot. And more recently, I've been coming back to Hobo with a shotgun quite a bit, and I've seen that movie quite a few times. As well, lately. those are the interesting ones that I wouldn't expect. Well, mm-hmm. besides Child's Play. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. the second question was uh, by Lost Rich, and he said, uh, "What film would you want to direct if you could?" My answer would be something uh, that I probably came up with. You know, <laughs> something that uh, was an original idea by me. Um, probably would actually not be a horror film, though, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know. If I also could pick something that, you know, I don't know. What, what mm-hmm. would you guys pick? Well, my the movie I just directed on Friday is actually not horror, which is surprising. I may put it up on YouTube when I'm finished. But, I mean, if you had, like, okay. money and a budget mm-hmm. and, like, a, a real film, like, what would you – would it be an original idea? Or, yep. I have an know? original idea that I would like to do if I had the money, but – yeah, I have a few ideas too. Maybe I would, re- re- if I really could pick, I would do a Tales from the Hood sequel. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But it would that's only awesome. be a sequel to the one segment in Tales from the Hood, and that's the little uh, doll segment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if I got to direct something, it would definitely be an original idea too. I mean, you know, coming, you know, my background being an English major, I mean, that's all I did was write. You know, I, I wrote a book actually, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> which I don't really talk about a whole lot, but people seem to really like it. But you know, I just I have tons of short stories, and that was like my whole thing 
That's how um, um, Michael was- Doherty or whatever his name is, who did uh, Trick or Treat, he just took a couple of the short stories and mashed that he wrote in college and mashed them together for a film. All yeah. Hallows Eve is like that too. Totally, and and you know that's what I would do because I have a lot of short stories sitting around here that I wrote for you know for certain you know certain times in school and and stuff that I wrote strictly just on my own and. And uh, yeah, I think I think basically what I would probably do is take all my original short stories and create an, an anthology. anthology film. Dude, I think that's a, what I would do. What I would most want to do is an anthology, like a segment in an anthology with a couple other people, and and Phil? really connect it. Sit down and I, kind of uh, have, really get it connected. If any of yeah, you guys want to do it, let's get let's get down and let's do it, man. Oh, I think yes. I think we could put something really cool together, but. Um, <laughs> I got to be the honest, I have some really fucking wild stories, man. And I think it would work really good as an anthology, you know, putting some of those things together. Mm-hmm. Um, but we would have to get some pretty interesting actors <laughs> for yeah. this shit, man. Well, that, that's, it, total, it, that's totally just possible. Put this, just put it this way, man. These aren't going to be for the faint of heart. You know, <laughs> these are going to be pretty some hardcore shit, I take it. Pretty hard stuff and, and pretty, you know... Very visual, and, and that's I guess you, I, I guess like I guess you haven't seen any Fred Fogel films or Ryan Nicholson films, or I think I think they're out there moods. Yeah, I love Fred Vogel, man. I mean, you know, doing stuff like you know, I never really thought when I was writing this, you know, looking at August Underground films and stuff. I never really thought of it like that, but um, it's funny because when I write stories, I don't really picture it as being a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I write it as a visual and, you know, and then when you read it back and you kind of go, oh, shit, you know, you know, you could probably do something with this. So, mm-hmm. but then you could go that angle of, you know, maybe using that found footage or you could use this as, you know, whatever. But, you know, you can take, you can do whatever you want from that story. That's the cool thing about writing the, the short stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, honestly, you know, our minds together would be really fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, I think some but, but, creative juices there. Oh, man. Oh, I wish we weren't so far away. <laughs> we are literally like so far away. It's like it's like I'm in I'm in film school. I have access to the equipment. I could probably find people to help out on the crew. It's like fuck. That, to- yeah. that totally sucks, cock. Zach asks a question: If you could have sex with any dead female victim while the bodies are still warm from Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> franchise, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> I love this question, but my instant answer is uh, is Voorhees. Debbie Sue Voorhees. I think that's yeah. everybody's answer. Mm-hmm. Totally, man. She's so fucking sexy, dude. Like, how can yeah. you not? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, personally, I thought you was going to go with Ethel, but uh, that is a you know that's a good second guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a great question. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um. After that, Zach asks. Uh, who would win in a fight between Dejin and Freddy? That's Who? easy. Dejin. Who's that? The guy from Wishmaster. Oh, okay. I haven't seen those films in like. Come on, man. Forever. I don't even. Freddy. Think... Freddy yeah. all day. There's... I got. I got to take my boy Freddy, man. It's yeah, Freddy. Man. He's my favorite character of all time. So I, I, I have to go with Freddy. Freddy. It, just on the pop cult, pop culture status of Freddy alone, you have to go with him. Mm-hmm. Like it's so hard to pick against him. Like, and I really do think he would probably like whoop Wishmaster's ass, the gin. And finally, Andre asks, uh, "What are a few of your favorite characters from like the big franchises? Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Mine is like Jenny, uh, Tom Matthews, uh, uh, Tommy Jarvis. Uh, Elm Street would be Nancy Kincaid, uh, Patricia Arquette's Kristen." Um, Halloween would be uh, Tina uh, from Halloween 5, which a lot of people don't like her, but I think she's one of my favorites. Annie you from know, the remake. King Kate is actually King Kate is actually my favorite in the in the Nightmare series, man. I love yeah. him so much. It's so damn sad at the beginning of part four, man. Yeah. You know, every time you watch that, doesn't it just kind of like mm-hmm. it's so damn sad and um I can't remember who did a post on Facebook like last week and they were, it might've been fuck. I can't remember who it was, but anyways, they were talking about uh, nightmare four and what people's beef is with the film. And I actually, I wrote a response on it saying, I don't think 
that you know people have like an extreme beef with it. I think people have issues with the fact that you know losing all those characters right away and stuff was kind of at the beginning of the film set the stage mm-hmm. for kind of a downer mode, right? And mm-hmm. I think that's one issue that people do have with the movie. But when you really look at part four, I think part four is actually a really great film. Yeah, part four you is know, one of my favorites in the series. Um, exactly. But I think it's offset because just what happens at the beginning of the film, and I think it kind of sets the stage and people kind of, they see that right away and they're like, really, Kincaid? He can't fucking die. I, I think most people don't like part four because it's like really when Freddy started getting super comedic. Yeah, and that was, yeah, and that's definitely another point too. But, um, you know, I don't really think of the comedic element that much you know compared to what's going on with the characters and stuff but that's just me so okay some of your favorite characters from the franchises um (laughs) uh tom matthews man i mean totally awesome um shit dude pretty much everything that you named were all the great ones yeah yeah i mean you can't just just give jp all the fucking yeah, Texas Chainsaw would be Stretch and Chop Top. They had uh, Andre Chop had a lot of them, li- like top. all the franchise listed. So I just named the ones that Kyle I like. Child's Boy too. Uh, Scream, yeah, Kyle, man, Kyle needs to make a return as a character in the next Child's Play. Mm-hmm. Um, Scream, Kirby, and Sydney and Stu. Those are the three good ones. Yeah, Stu's awesome. Yeah, so that about wraps it up for all the questions. <laughs> Okie dokie. So. Seem to be on pace. So let's go on to the what we watched. This week we're going to be talking about two films and the pick of the week. Because that's all me and JP watch. Because I'm a loser in finals. I've taken over all my time. But starting, I just don't watch that many movies a lot. Starting, <laughs> it's just, starting in two weeks. That's show, like all I want to do up. when I'm at home. I just want to watch movies, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I but, I don't know. I've had a rough week also. Yeah. It's, um, it's been – this whole month has been brutal. If you guys have been been noticing, I haven't been watching that many films. And what I have been watching uh, contributes to film school in some way or another. So It took me like three nights to watch one of the films that I watched. I kept falling asleep. And not because it was like necessarily bad. It's just fucking tired. Yeah, me too, man. I need a break. But Who's anyway, first? doesn't matter to me. I'll go. Okay. So the first film I watched is called th- – th- now, this film has – much like another film we'll talk about later, has a terrible title. Uh, it's called Alien Raiders from the year 2008. This title instantly throws you off. Like who's going to want to watch a movie called Alien Raiders? It sounds garbage, doesn't it? Uh-huh. It's not. It's actually really solid. Huh. It's uh, a group of uh, kind of like – these uh, special, like, tactical group of uh, characters enter a small town grocery store, pretty much take it hostage, lock the doors, um, hmm. and basically they're looking for an alien. There's an alien like virus that's tra- and they tracked it down to this place. They used to work for like huh. top government stuff, and they so all raw, kind of dropped out. Raw feed, interesting. Yeah, interesting. and they interesting. take. Take this, uh, uh, you know, store hostage, and they have everybody tied up and stuff. And uh, they have one of the characters is named Spooky, and he's kind of the guy. He's the spotter. They have a name for each character, like the medic, the spotter, and so on. And the spotter kind of looks at people and can tell if they're infected with the alien or not. Um, he gets killed. So basically, they have to go the old-fashioned way, which is kind of reminiscent of the thing. Uh, it kind of feels like that a bit. Nowhere near as good, obviously. Uh, but they pretty much cut off a finger and see how it reacts, stuff like that. And that's how they're, they're good. That's the old school way of telling if somebody's an alien or not. Meanwhile, they're trying to get another spotter in there and they think they've found the king. That's basically your story. Um, it's pretty effective as like a little low budget sci fi alien thing style film. I, I, I really liked a lot of aspects of it. I think the third act kind of gets a little predictable and goes into that like paint by numbers territory where it's just like uh you know wrapping up the story um kind of basic screenwriting stuff there uh the characters are kind of cool uh kind of predictable with like who's an alien and stuff i think it's nowhere near they did don't do a good job of like building that like tension and and suspense and and stuff like the thing i keep comparing it to the thing because it's kind of similar um it got a similar concept 
Mm -hmm. uh, but Alien Raider is pretty damn solid. Have you have either of you guys seen this one? No, but I added it to my wish list because it sounds it's real cheap cool. too. Yeah. No, I haven't uh, seen this one, but I did watch the review on it though that you did. Yeah, it's it's one of those films that you just it it was doomed from the start as soon as they titled it. <laughs> <laughs> Alien Alien Raiders does sound shitty. Hey, Moods, so it you, does. I, yeah. Are you gonna pick up? Sorry, to stop topic for a second. Are you gonna pick up that? insane film i know it got a region one release finally that's the guy from the director who did evil ed yeah 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 i've got it sitting in a cart right now i just gotta actually pick it up so mm -hmm. you gotta let me know how it is so i give alien raiders a seven out of ten cool 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 nice cool bones mm -hmm. all right i'll go um first up i watched this film from the oh, fuck, man? It actually says it's released in... Two <clears throat> this must be a 2013 film, but it's a 2014 release by uh, Fish to Circle Films. And it's called Antisocial. Nice. Uh, it basically is about uh, a group of friends, about five friends, university, uh, you know, students and stuff. And they've decided that they're going to have a house party to bring in the new year. And so they all gather in their in their dorm and whatnot. And uh, what they have, they don't know what's going on outside of them. But there's like this global epidemic that's happening. And uh, basically what's going on is that people are going fucking insane outside <laughs> and actually starting to like attack other people and kill them and do all this crazy shit. And nobody has any idea what's going on. Um, you soon learn that basically the epidemic is caused by this virus that is going through um, your your social devices. Huh. So it, it's it's being caused by you know if you're fucking around on your computer and stuff, it can infect you that <laughs> way. If you're talking on your phone, it can fucking you know. So go... it's like it's like fear dot com. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like that totally. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so all these people, and when you get infected. You basically start to see shit, and then you start to bleed through your eyes and uh, nose, and then basically you lose your shit, and you get ultra aggressive, and you go crazy, and you start to fucking you know try to kill people and shit like that. So once they figured out that uh, you know people are going absolutely insane, insane, they're not you know obviously not trying to let anybody in their place and stuff, but you know them not knowing exactly what's causing all this. You know, some of the people inside the, you know, inside their dorm start to turn and stuff. And then basically it's, you know, your typical fight for survival. And, you know, we need to figure out what the fuck's going on here. Um, you know what? The movie was okay. Uh, I understand the, you know, the social commentary that was going on here. It's, you know, they're basically saying that everyone is so damn connected and, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of social commentaries. Definitely Here's not a definitely not an original idea. It's not. It's not an original idea at all. You know, it's about your fucking technology and how everybody uses technology way too much. And this is the result of using technology way too much. And everybody being so damn connected is that instantly when some shit goes through, you know, your your social media devices and stuff, it's going to fucking, you know, this is what happens. And you know, it was. It's not the worst idea in the movie in the in the world. I don't ah. mind this at all. Um, you know, it wasn't the worst movie I've, I've I've seen. You know, it wasn't too bad. Like some of the effects were pretty cool. Um, some of the attacks were pretty interesting and stuff. But it's very kind of segregated. It, it, you know, it's you're in this room and you only have these characters, and it's basically all about them and what's going on and stuff. So it's just you know, there's not a lot to offer really. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have mixed opinions on this one because I've heard some people, you know, really enjoy this one and other ones, other, other people say, you know, the social commentary, it's very obvious. It's, it's kind of, you know, boring, blah, blah, blah. I do agree with both elements of it. You know, it was entertaining, but at the same time, it's not the most original idea in the world. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I do would, I, I think I would loosely recommend this one maybe kind of give it like a six out of 10, you know, like I said, I think it's worth, worth the watch. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's definitely not the worst uh, Vicious Circle films <laughs> release I've watched this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, overall, you know, it's um, it just suffers from you know that idea that you know some people might go, oh, that's really fresh and original, but it's really not. It's been done many times, mm-hmm. you know, and you know some of the effects are not the greatest in the film and stuff, and it's kind of predictable at times too. So it gets like a very, very loose recommendation. You know, seek this one out if you can find it for cheap or see it for free or whatever. Um, it was okay. That's all I can say about it. It was okay. You know. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. I'm going to have to definitely check that out. And I'll let you know what I think when I watch it. Yeah, like I said, I think I think people will have different opinions on it. And... uh and that's kind of it's kind of that piece, though. You know, it's that whole social commentary. I mean, we're all victims of it, though, right? Uh-huh. You know, what you are know? we? We're using <laughs> fucking technology right now. Yeah, but that's exactly what we're doing, right? Mm, I'm over. I'm sick of that but idea. This, but yeah, you know, this one. You know, I, I, I don't know. I kind of am too, Jeremy. Se- seek it, seek your own risk. Like I said, it's not the worst thing I've seen. It's not the best. It was entertaining. And that's about it. It's not what Smiley's like about social media too. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, it it totally is. The social commentary is basically about the same thing. Yeah. You know, they're using the, they're using internet devices and and shit like that. See, why can't you use an interesting like Harvey with Caron it's, and Spring Breakers? Or with something? Smiley, with Smiley, it's basically this ridiculous slasher film, and this one is just basically a virus that is being, mm-hmm. you know, infecting I mean, today's youth. It is completely true. I mean, that that's some. Um, for going back to last week when I went and seen the the films at the uh, drive-in Halloween's playing and because of technology, everybody's looking at their phones and, and they can't pay attention to the film. Does does that not fucking anger you when you're watching a movie like Halloween you look over and some dude's like texting and you're like, (laughs) we're watching fucking Halloween. Listen listen to (laughs) this dude. So a couple years ago I was, uh, my cousin, uh, who's a, a female was at my house and uh, I had another friend here, and we was uh, watching Pet Cemetery, and I was like, you, you know, this is a really awesome movie. You know, pretty scary. This is one of the films that actually gave me a nightmare when I was a kid, um, which was like the only film. And uh, <laughs> so we're watching it. My cousin's, uh, you know, looking at her phone the whole time. I'm like, that's really annoying, man. Can you stop? And she looked up, and Church was on the screen, and she's like, that cat looks fake. <laughs> I'm like, it's a real cat. <laughs> what do you mean it looks fake? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What are you? What are you talking about? What is wrong with these two people?" <laughs> nice. So yeah, carry on. Well, I'm done with antisocial, but uh, like I said, I'd loosely, loosely recommend. I like I said, man, I have seen some fucking people talk about this movie, and they really enjoyed it. So that's why I'm kind of like, you know, seek it, you know, check it out at your own risk, kind of thing. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is, man. It's a loose recommendation. All right. Jeremy. Okay. My first film that I watched last week is a movie Mood sent me that I saw before last October. But I wanted to check it out because Scream Factory released it. I wanted to see how they did with the transfer and everything. And that is Crawl Space starring Klaus Kaczynski. Klaus Kinski. Thank you, Moods. Thank you, JP. I say that every fucking time, and you always fucking correct me. Every fucking I knew you was you. You said it you in, in anticipation for me to correct you. So mm-hmm. I felt if I didn't, I would have let you down. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, to be honest. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, it's Klaus Kinski. Yeah. All right. This is definitely a a an underrated gem that Scream Factory picked up because it didn't have a Region One release. But uh, this movie's from 1986, directed by uh, the fucking guy. He's a Full Moon director. Uh, David Trumer, is that his name? David (laughs) Trumer, however you pronounce his name. Really nice Jewish guy. I met him last October. Anyway, (laughs) film is about uh, Klaus Kinski owns an apartment building, and um, he basically kidnaps the women who live in this apartment building and knocks them off. And he, you know, he, he spies on them through the crawl space in this apartment building. 
and um, you know all these women are disappearing, and you know people are coming in asking about the vacant apartment, and he only accepts women in this vacant apartment because he obviously uh, you know kills them and knocks them out, but he keeps this one girl in a cage in his. We don't. I don't ever think we learn her name, but. Um, he keeps her in a cage in his, I guess, his office, and she, he cuts her tongue out just like the guy in People Under the Stairs, so she can't talk or anything like that. But Gross. he keeps, yep. But he keeps her around, and you know, he kind of opens up to her a little bit because you know she can't do anything about it. We truly see uh, how fucked up this guy, <laughs> how fucked up this guy is, and then we see something happen in the ending and it's just fucking amazing. The sequence when he's watching something in his apartment is just absolutely amazing when we learn about why this guy is is fucked up and we start to feel for him a little bit. Um, it, it's definitely an, an, an underrated film that not many people knew about until Scream Factory released it. Even though I heard, I've talked about this before, Klaus Kinski was a pain in the ass to fucking work with. And, uh, you know, there's even a documentary on the Scream Factory release about the director um, trying to kill him off to get the insurance money, that he was that big of an asshole. But um, it's definitely an underrated film from 1986. I I recommend you guys pick up the Scream Factory. PQ is good, H... uh, Audio quality is good. Everything's good, of course, from Scream Factory, and it's it's an interest it's an interesting character piece. Um, definitely a deep film that you could you could probably write about, which is interesting for a horror film. But um, really good. I I recommend it, even though some people seem to hate it. Cool. I'll definitely what? get around to checking that one out. Mm-hmm. What's with all the hate on that movie, though? Like, I don't. I know. Hate. I think I, it's. I think I like it's it. really well done. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I think it. I think it's underrated a little bit. Um, I give that one a seven and a half out of ten for sure. <clears throat> cool, cool. It's really good. All right. So uh, the second film I watched is by the one and only Wesley Earl Craven, and this film is one of his TV movies from the eighties. This is you know right around Elm Street time. I think it. I don't know if it was before or after. It's called Invitation to Hell. You guys familiar with this one? Yep. Familiar with it? it? I, I just I haven't seen actually, it, but I have. It's like one of like two Craven films I've never seen before. Yeah, so there, there's a handful of uh, Wesley Craven films that I haven't seen that I've been you know kind of working my way through. I've been picking them up, and I decided it's finally to get it's finally time to start going through some of these. Uh, Invitation to Hell was one that I haven't seen, and uh, it follows a family who moves to this uh, small suburban town somewhere in California, probably, or at least that's where it was filmed. Um, and they keep hearing about this club. You got to join the club. You, you know, everybody who's everybody is in the club. You know, it's some kind of, uh, I don't, I don't know what they're called. Um, there's a name for them. They're like, uh, like a country club type thingy. You know what I mean? What I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, so one like of those it, things, like society moods, yeah, yeah, just yeah. a bunch of white people. Yep, rich white yeah, people. Yeah, it is. It is a bunch of rich white people, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So th- he he gets a new job and he's designing. Th- and this is something Wes Craven does a lot in his films. So have these like weird things that like kind of have to do with like ha- have to do with like the third act of the plot or something. Uh, he's designing, and it always has to do with like weird technology or something. Like I think a shocker and stuff. Um. He, this guy's designing a spacesuit that can like recognize uh, life and you know human life and alien life and plant life and all that shit when he looks through the you know glass of this uh, space sh- suit like an astronaut suit. Um, so this guy's like designing this shit and and instantly anytime you have like technology and computers and shit in your in your films you instantly like date it and this this one definitely has like that eighties like dated shit it reminds me of um you know like deadly friend when he makes the robot and shit shit that's like totally like not even plausible at all that Wes craven does in his films a lot of times um so he's designing this suit at this company and you have uh the, the club everybody's talking about the club everybody's in the club and 
you find out that like they don't even play like somebody crashes into his car and uh since they're like the president of the club like the cops are just like no i don't even worry about it he's like no i want the insurance he's like no 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 trust me mister you don't want to worry about it or something so it's kind of like just this you we've seen this before like these type of movies and you eventually find out that the club has something to do with like some kind of cult like worship of like devils and you know it's it gets a little crazy and shit um it's not very that it's not really that good it's uh you know definitely not one of Wes Craven's best films that's for damn sure but once I found out it was a tv movie I was a little more forgiving than I was when I uh, was watching through it when I didn't know that it was a tv movie I was like this is you know really kind of under deadly blessing style (laughs) um so overall I give it Probably like a five and a half for a TV movie out of ten. It's not bad. Interesting. Maybe yeah. I'll have to watch it. But you know, just trying to track down those Wesley Craven films and watch them all. Wesley Craven. <laughs> <laughs> it's his name. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it's my go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, for the next film I watched, I think this one came out in 1993, uh, briefly starring Christopher Lee, and it's called Funny Man. Oh, man, I've been waiting. Oh, man. Okay, so this one's got a pretty simple plot. The artwork is fucking amazing in that release. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. Um, this one has a really simple premise of the film. It's basically about Christopher Lee. His character, um, the beginning of the film starts out and it's, you know, a bunch of guys sitting around playing poker. And uh, Christopher Lee makes this, like, ridiculous bet and, of course, loses. But what he bets is his um, huge mansion, you know, back in, you know, the UK and stuff like that. And he ends up losing it to this, you know, this American, um, you know, he's like a record producer or whatever. Very eccentric kind of guy or whatever. And uh, so anyways, he ends up losing, you know, his whole house and whatnot. So this record producer, he moves into this place with his wife and his two children and stuff like that. And basically, it's like a huge setup for just disaster. Uh, There's like this really (laughs) fucking like eccentric, like jester in this house (laughs) that basically starts taking out the family one by one. Um like, the kids get picked off, like, right away. And it's, like, the funniest shit, too, man. Um, but this movie is just filled with, like, legitimately funny, dark humor. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's it's really, really well done. Like, the the jester, he, like, he'll talk to the camera sometimes at, at, at you know, points like that in the film. And it, But it's really well done. Like, it's creepy and it's it's funny, like, legitimately funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not over the top. Kills are hilarious. But it's such a fucking fun time, man. Hence, Funny Man. You know, that's the jester. The guy that plays, you know, the, the jester is just, he does such a fantastic job in this. Um, it's definitely when you can't really say a whole lot about it. It's very simple, but I don't want to give anything away. But uh, this movie was fucking awesome. I had a great time with this. Everybody should own this one, I think. I can't believe I've, you know, never seen this movie up until now. Um, fucking awesome, man. It, you know, I was kind of disappointed that Christopher Lee wasn't in the film more. But you, you get that, you know, you get that, you know, reaction right away that he's not going to be in it because, you know, set at this fucking poker table and stuff like that, right? But, you know, so that was kind of a little downer moment to it, but... You know, at the same time, the whole film makes up for it. <laughs> I, I just even thinking about parts in this film are just cracking me up, man. But it's so fucking worth seeing and watching, man. This is a great movie. Um, it's just mean spirited, too. It's mean spirited <laughs> and it's dark humor. And it's like, like Pet it's, Cemetery mean spirited. <laughs> Well, no, this is a movie that you have to see to believe, though. Like, it's really hard to explain and do justice even explaining it because you can't you can't give the performance of the jester and what he's doing in the film justice by talking about it. You really have to see this movie. I highly recommend this. This is a great movie. Um, Rating? Uh, I give this one about an 8.5 out of 10. Interesting. 
really, really fucking good, man. It's, I just, I don't want to ruin anything for anybody that hasn't seen this, that's listened to this right now, but um, just a fun, fun film. The release that I have is by Subversive, yeah. Subversive uh, Cinema, and it's a great release. It's got a great booklet, um, really tons of features and stuff. So, What year yeah. was this film again? 1994. 93, I think. I think it came out in so the 90s, huh? Yeah. If it came out in 93, Jeremy gets all the good shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, man? This it, this movie actually feels like a 90s film. That's it good. Has that, I, it I actually ha- like the 90s feel. Yeah. It has a 90s feel to it. But it's like, I know, it, you know, explaining a movie like this to you, JP, you might be a little turned off, you know, by the comical elements and mm-hmm. stuff. But this one really does work, though. Really does work. It's so fucking mean spirited and dark. You just be like, awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I mean, seriously, kills the kids, you know, right away. It's awesome. So. Mm-hmm. All, All right. right. So next movie I'm going to talk about definitely has some horror horror themes in it. We were talking about this movie before we started the show. That's uh, Harmony Caron's Gummo, which came out in 1997. So. I had to write. I got the. Luxury. This is like a, this is a stretch for horror, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> and right, I'll just go. I'll skip it then and talk no, about my pick. You can talk about it. It's it's got some fucked up horror elements. Now, how could a rape in a horror film be different than a rape in another film that doesn't have horror elements in it? You talked about. Oh, uh, it's the it's the tone. Mm-hmm. The tone of the film. It's just. You, it's been years since I've seen Gummo, but um, yeah, man, it's. I know, it's I got seen, some dark I, elements to it. I've seen a lot of people talk about it, horror conventions and stuff like that. Maybe it's just me or something like that. Yeah, it 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 kind of reminded me like of the the types of films that I like, where it's just uh, the, this like y- this uh, troubled youth, which I, I love like troubled youth uh, films, but it's like a, a, a hyper realistic look at it it, uh, it, it it youth, and that movie kind of has a. Like you were saying, the um, like the situation. It's about these. It's not really like a flowing narrative. There, there's uh, no. If you guys are familiar with Harmony Caron, you know that he does not give two fucks about a narrative. He doesn't give a fuck about the characters. He doesn't give a fuck about anything. He just I don't gives, think it's true that he that, doesn't give a fuck about the characters. Mm, I, I I don't know. I just don't think he he gives a fuck about anything that he's gonna make something that he that he wants to make and he doesn't give a shit what people think about it but um film has no narrative it basically follows a community in ohio after a devastating earthquake not an earthquake tornado <laughs> fucking tired a, a tornado and was it a cactus nato no it's not a cactus nato it was not a blank cd nato it was not any of that but uh, this town gets devastated by a tornado, and um, basically everyone in this community's life gets turned upside down, and some pretty fucked up shit starts to happen between these characters. And um, it it's it's an interesting it's an interesting film, even though this is a horror podcast, and I know that, but I know you know a lot of people on here are familiar with Gummo and and watched it because. It's often it's often brought up to being one of the disturbing independent film of the 1990s and um, wow it was really made in the 90s late ni- late that. late 90s and um, during its festival run a whole bunch of people from you know the press who can't handle it got up which when when I was watching it today or watching it you know in 2014 it's definitely not as extreme as you know other things that are being made today but i could see when it was released in 1997 the the overtones of you know raping a mentally challenged girl and you know beating cats and stuff like that i i fucking cats hated class. i i hated it like the they cats, beat cats man. they drown cats cats definitely have an overtone but they don't kill house cats they only kill stray cats so that has a little has a little bit of deeper meaning that I'm not going to get into right now because, you know, like I said, I've been writing a paper on Harmony Caron and uh, his his themes in films. But um, yeah, I was surprised that that guy wrote Kids because I, I, I looked him up after you mentioned him. I was like, whoa, Kids, because Kids is like one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. I love all of those Larry Clark things. Mm-hmm. Man, all all I, his films, man, have uh, 
Kids was so good, man. All his films have common common themes between the characters. Definitely uh, um, characters who are put into situations that lead to extreme boredom that they have no idea. Uh, so they act in an extreme way to get them out of this boredom. Uh, kids, obviously, you know, they, they get bored, so they rape, you know. It's just what it, it's, they it's give kind a- of... They give aid to all these people. It's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty... F- fucked up when you it's think just kids it. being kids really mm-hmm. yeah, like, but they don't think about the con- but they don't think about the consequences they just do it without thinking about the consequences which is exactly and, what kids do exactly and that's seen in even in gummo you know they're they're you know killing cats and you know fucking mentally retarded women and not thinking about what could happen they don't care about what happens. And the same thing with Spring Breakers. If you guys haven't seen Spring Breakers, I highly, highly recommend you check it out. I know people are often uh, weirded out by the cast, but the cast makes the film. It's a highly, highly disturbing, fucked film with a lot of fucked undertones in it. And you see and you see the same use of <laughs> theme. Sorry, I'm getting off track. Yeah. Gummo, eight, an 8 out of 10. Check it out. Goodbye. Pick of the week time. <laughs> So I have, I have Harmony Corona on my mind lately, but yeah, well. I, w- I, I I like all those types of films though. They're really cool. Like, yeah, okay. So I don't uh, I don't I don't talk very often, so I guess I could get a <laughs> spiel every once in a while. Uh, you want pick of the week, Tom? Sure, pick of the week. So my turn. Yep. Um, my pick of the week this week is a film that came out in 1989. It's a sequel. It's called The Fly Two. Uh, so the fly two picks up after the f- first fly, which is like a remake. So I guess it's technically not the first fly, the Cronenberg fly. Uh, and this one is, uh, I was surprised to see that there was like a continuity, uh, between the films. I, I was not expecting that at all. Um, we have the son of, uh, the, f- the, 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 uh, Brundle, Seth Brundle in the, in the first film. And he is, part fly i guess you have fly dna with him and he grows up at a uh, accelerated rate like uh kind of like species i guess Uh um this was done before species obviously so uh he's very smart very strong very just better than than regular humans pretty much he is kind of born in to like the the government kind of you know that he's like born on some kind of research facility like base thing um he then as, after he grows up he kind of gets a job as you know finishing the teleportation experiment that Seth Brundle was uh successful in in the first film but it you know it's kind of messed up they got to really work out all the kinks um as he's doing that he begins dating a girl and uh there's like a betrayal and he is slowly turning into I guess it's a fly it's <laughs> it doesn't really look like one uh this film has like a lot of cool effects. There's actually one with like a, a mutated dog that was actually kind of really sad. It was like bugging me. It was like it was really like downbeat and stuff. Um, nowhere near is like strong like story as as the first fly. That you know, speaking of technology and and things dating technology, uh, technology dating films. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because you would like in these films you would just. The computers, they would just ask a computer a question and, and, and like it would give them the answer. Like, <laughs> like the computer only knows what we, you know, what it capable of knowing. So he's asking like, yeah, I was like that too, man. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, asking like, what would happen if you know, D- like I put my DNA in a fly or something? It's like, well, like if you don't know it and you like run the computers and stuff, like the computer's not good. It's always funny when these like '80s films do that. Like, like these computers are like something. That, like a god <laughs> that just knows everything um so yeah uh the fly too i was really surprised by this one i never seen it before uh going into it i was expecting like a, a way like lower grade sequel but it's actually pretty strong it's like i said you know it's no cronenberg's fly but it, it has its uh qualities and um you know the gore it's kind of gross out and stuff and i like that kind of stuff so the fly two i give a seven and a half out of ten you guys like the fly two yeah i don't mind it it. actually 
I don't mind it. Um, what the fuck's his name? Eric Stoltz is the lead in that film. Um, yeah, I didn't really care for him too much. That's that's one of the negatives. Yeah, you know, I actually haven't seen it in such a long time, man. I really gotta check it out again. It's a fun one, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So my pick of the week here is from. I believe 2013 um, from the director of the midnight me train and versus mm, I know what this is. Uh, this one is uh, starring Luke Evans and it's called no one lives. Yeah. Uh, fuck man. I, I didn't really WWE know WWE film, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't really Does know. Does that have this... good hope for Cena evil two and leprechaun? No, nah, just seen <laughs> just seen <no> evil two. <laughs> Jesus, man. I hope so. I hope it's on this level. Um, yeah, this this movie fucking really surprised me. I had no idea what to expect from this. No idea. Mm-hmm. I didn't really. I'd seen lots of people have this like on their best films of last year, and I was like, I didn't know anything about the movie. Um, it's basically about uh, Luke Evans' character and his girlfriend. Girlfriend. Um, they are traveling around uh, the country or whatnot. Apparently, traveling around and. Um, they're actually kind of like, you know, abducted by, you know, these kind of fucking badass people and stuff like that. But what they don't know is that Luke Evans' character is actually fucking insane. <laughs> so basically, they fuck with the wrong person. And then you learn some things. This is one movie you can't really give a lot of shit about mm-hmm. at all. I can't really say anything. Um, cause I don't want to ruin anything, but, uh, that's pretty much what it is. You know, it's a very, very simple premise with a very cool, you know, instant twist to the film. You know, you learn something right away about Luke Evans character. That's pretty fucking awesome. And, uh, and his motives and what his motives are. And this one is fucking nuts. It's got great, great gore. It's got great scenes. Uh, there's a lot of death in this film. <laughs> a lot of blood. Uh, For a WWE really... film, I was I was highly I saw this in theaters. I was highly surprised. Yeah, dude, I was so surprised by. Well, there's definitely one scene in this film mm-hmm. with. Uh, yeah, I was like, what? Really? Like it was pretty nasty. Um, but really well done. I mean, I think there may have been a smidget of CGI in certain parts. Um. But it was really, really fucking well done. Most of the effects are practical. Everything is pretty much practical in the film, which was awesome. I really enjoyed that. But this movie right here, hard one to talk about. Can't really say a whole lot about it, but uh, highly recommend this shit, man. You like Gorefest? Yeah. It even says right on the back, like, you know, a high body count and gruesome thrills, a film that's, you know, like, it, it you know, it basically just says it's fucking gruesome as shit. Um, I can't, I can't deny it, man. This this movie was great, great film. Mm-hmm. Uh, JP, I think you'd really dig this one, man. But I think the most surprising thing for me is that I didn't expect it to be what it was, at all. It really worked. So, um, no one lives. Rate in this one, I will give it a about an eight and a half. I think the, uh, I think the way they structure the kills in this film too is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty cool, man. Um, I, I, I especially loved the scene in the bathroom. Do you, you know, you know what scene I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. When they when they break into the bathroom and they see her, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just loved the way she was, you know, kind of presented at that moment in the film. I thought that was super cool. But this one has some fucking high octane scenes and shit. Highly recommend it. No one lives. It's good. Really good, really good blew me. Away. Really blew me away. So awesome. Uh-huh. Awesome. Great film. I'll definitely throw that one on the watch list. Yeah. Um. So. Your pick of the week. My pick of the week is a film me and Adrian were talking about a lot. And if you know, if you follow us on the 22 Shots of Moods on our podcast, you probably know what movie I'm talking about. And that's Peter Jackson's Blood Fest Dead Alive. So after me and me and uh, Shit, me and Mr. 
uh, Lost Witch. You know, we're talking about Dead Alive. <laughs> Me and Mr. Lost Witch. That's that's a funny name. <laughs> I, I decided to pop it in and uh, to give it a watch because I haven't seen it in a while. Definite pick of the week worthy. Mm-hmm. No, not not a you know worthy narrative or anything like that. But it's it's such a fun film. The ending is just fucking fantastic. It's so Okay, yeah. now my question is, how does the Blu-ray look? Out of print? Out of print. <laughs> it looks out of print. Fifty plus dollars. Um <laughs> No, but honestly, how how is an ups- the, uh, upscale, how is the transfer? Ups- upscale D V D. That sucks. Upscale D V D. Because I have actually heard some people say that the picture quality is really poor on that. Mm-hmm. And that really pisses me off, man, because I'm like, fuck, you know, that movie goes for so much money and it pisses oh, me off that I, I never just got the DVD wait. even. Oh, really? The DVD is yeah, on print too. Yeah, and I remember seeing like a huge stack of them at FYE for like five dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I paid like five or six bucks for mine too. To be honest, man. Dude, I'm I watched I Dead Alive for the first time with a friend um, over her house, and we was watching. It late at night on Netflix, and it was one of the best like late at night movies I ever seen because I'd never even heard of it back then. And I was just like, it was just such a gross out gore film, and I, I like loved it. It was so fun. Mm-hmm. The, the the scene at the dinner table with the fucking applesauce or whatever. <laughs> oh man, the grossest shit was, like, in gagging. the world. It's so disgusting, man. That part gags me every time. <laughs> It's so gross. That's that's what I love about that film, man. It has like the nastiest shit ever, and it's it's so... the best movie to watch with somebody else. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's just so much fun, man. The ending you cannot deny. It's just yeah, so, it's so. There's good. a certain point where you're just like, how can they top what they're doing? They bring out a fucking lawnmower and shit. I'm like, oh my god, the, you just like you double take it certain times. You're like, how much? How much more? How much more is there to to do? <laughs> The body parts I was just so impressed everywhere. by that movie when I seen it. I was just like, it, at a certain point, you just like, you're in this like weird state where you're like, I don't even know what I'm watching anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I really yeah. need to. I haven't. I've only seen it that one time too. I need to revisit. I love that monkey thing at the beginning. The fucking Zingaya Zingaya thing. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. So you got any more thoughts on that one, Jeremy? No. Nah, if you like gore, that lies for you, of course. Eight and a half out of ten. If you love gore, then it's definitely for you. Yeah. Yeah, that movie is... But, like, how about the very, very end of the film? I can't remember, <laughs> dude. It's been a while. <laughs> the fucking very end of that movie is so fucking retarded. I'm sorry, but it's like, what? Mm-hmm. It's it's so funny, man. It's so funny. Um it's- is, is, are, we re- are we ready to move on to our discussion? We got 19 minutes before the Skype recorder shits out on us. But uh, we can just start it back up. So we cut out here, guys. I apologize. Is but it two and a half hours? Two hours and 34 minutes. Okay. And we're at two hours and 16 minutes. So okay. we'll be talking about the 2013 release of Torture Chamber. And now I'm going to hand it over to Moods this time around because it's his recommendation of this week to watch instead of JP to tell the story of Torture Chamber. Go ahead, Mr. Moods. Well, Torture Chamber is kind of an interesting story because it's not really told like a spoon-fed story at all, um, as you guys probably know. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it basically follows... Uh, this character named Jimmy and he is like a burn victim (laughs) and basically what he's done is he's kind of gathered you know other I wanted to say the word inmates uh, other fellow you know burn victims and stuff and he's basically kind of um, he's got certain powers about Jimmy Uh he's got he can do certain things and he has this weird kind of like cult leader status about him that he can control people in certain ways and stuff. And, um, and yeah, I mean, really like, what do you say about this film? Because the story is so, told so throughout the film, uh-huh. um, without really giving I'll, too much. I could give a brief story synopsis from IMDb if you want. Oh, if you want to read that. Yeah. 
Yeah, a deeply religious mother who believes her son is controlled by the devil, a Catholic priest devoted to saving his family, who tries to cure his deranged younger brother, but 13-year-old Jimmy Morgan is possessed by an evil too powerful to be exercised by any religion. Well, yeah, I mean, that pretty much says it all right there. And basically what Jimmy does is, you know, he's in this this uh this home or whatnot and stuff and yeah he's got certain powers man we'll just uh we'll just kind of leave it there Mm -hmm. okay so first of all terrible title terrible cover yeah Mm, i like the cover a little bit it's not amazing but it's not like horrible if i pick this cover up and i seen the title i would not buy this film i buy anything for a dollar fifty that sounds interesting so yeah, you know, you know, actually watching this movie a couple times now, the name Torture Chamber isn't that fitting to the film. Mm-hmm. I have to say, I, I have to say it is not the greatest title in the world for this film, in my opinion. There is some torture and it is in a chamber of sorts. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when you think of a film called Torture Chamber, don't you think that it would be all taking place like in there and... And all about torture. Yeah, that's why I said it's a terrible title. And it's a terrible title in general. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it is a little little misleading, I guess, but I don't know. And why would you Um, watch this movie multiple times? You don't like it, JP, I take it? Not at all. Interesting. This movie's bad, dude. Moots loves it. it. He says that there's not a spoon-fed story. Yeah, I agree. There's also not a, Ooh. you know, what's not a spoon-fed story is like something like Phantasm. This got, this is just a bad movie. It's we got, bad ooh, flowing narrative. Ooh, we got a woman fight coming ahead of us. Oh, here, that, here we go, the, the woman part two. Okay, so uh, give your opinions on this then because I think this movie is fucking awesome. <laughs> well, what did you like about it? I loved everything. I loved everything, everything? about the. I loved everything about the structure. I loved. I love the characters, like how everything is told, like everything is so just, <laughs> you know, it's not one of those stories where, you know, you know, everything that's going on in the first 30, fil- 30 minutes of the film, you learn things throughout the whole entire film. Um, I thought the fucking score in this film was fantastic. <clears throat> I loved, I loved Jimmy's mask. I thought it was fucking awesome. I thought the atmosphere was fantastic. The mask was cool. I, I didn't loved feel the- any atmosphere at all. Are you serious? Are we, yeah, did dude. we watch the same film? <laughs> really? Yeah, no I atmosphere? Sure there's so watched. much atmosphere, man. There's so much atmosphere mm-hmm. in it. I don't know, man. I, because I there's a lot, it. But the story is told because you're probably getting thrown out of the story because, you know, as you learn certain things about Jimmy and him being bullied in school and, and, and all these certain things, you know, maybe that's what's taking you out of it. But no, in the present moment, what's part taking part me of out film, of it is there's not really. They don't set up a sense of transition very well. Like when you're watching a character go, when you're watching an event happen and then another event happens and it's just like a sequence of events that isn't combined. It isn't going through a flowing story. And that is fine to do. Because the the whole story is told from, you know, almost in flashbacks and like, okay, this happened and this happened. Yeah, which is fine to do, but you have to make it transition smoothly and it's jarring when it transitions. It's, it doesn't feel natural. And that's one of my beefs with it. Another thing is I found the acting to be pretty awful, especially there's one scene in particular when they're in their uh, huffing spray paint. It's just completely not. Huffing Not spray paint. That sounds it's like gummo. Just, <laughs> it's just the the way that they're acting. It that I've I've seen kids huff spray paint, and they they're just like, it's it's over. Yeah, but, but dude, it's you know it's kids and whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, yeah. I, I mean, I I don't think. I mean, I there's a lot of films out there that I love that yeah that has some pretty sketchy acting in it. To be honest, I mean, to be honest, yeah, I didn't. Which, I didn't just think one that minor complaint. The acting, it, it, that whole scene to me just seemed really silly, though. Um, another thing is really I didn't the, find the not scene, one the, character. The scene is so essential, though. But the scene is so essential, though, because you know that whole scene with the with the uh them huffing all their fucking you know their air sprays and their paints and shit like that i mean that's what happens to jimmy and you know it, that scene's essential 
Yeah, but that scene is also – it doesn't really make sense to me. How does it not make sense? I don't okay, understand. So he, how does that, he kills how that the does... kid with the bag, but he doesn't yeah. kill the kid with the bag. He also kills the kid with the bag while the other friend watches and then doesn't realize that he's killing the kid with the bag. Well, I'm assuming it's because – what the other kid doesn't realize is that what you're saying? The other kids are just standing there watching him kill the kid with the bag, and then he's like, acts like well, nothing happens when after. <laughs> well, it's simply because the kid's so fucked up, he doesn't even fucking give a shit. But another thing is like they're they're sitting there smoking weed. I don't I don't see somebody who's already doing you know sp- huffing spray paints like something you do when you don't have anything else to do like there's already smoking weed <laughs> it, it just it, it seemed really like unnatural to me um even if they are young it just i don't know man it just it was okay bad. so these so these are your complaints though that, that's one of my complaints okay the flowingness of the story was was another thing i also found not one character to really be interesting besides jimmy a little bit but at the same time he felt generic the, there wasn't besides the mask there wasn't really much to him he was just like a puppet he was like a walking head talking head pretty much just but i mean the no... whole but the whole film it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else except for maybe his brother the mother the brother the 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 cop guy who's who's tracking him down none of those people was at all interesting or or cr- even remotely creative in character wise they were pretty all generic Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know how involved you need to be into the police officer that's investigating things. I don't really well, think Well, I mean, that's... this was you guys' complaint with Evil Dead, right? That's the mean? number one thing everybody says, the characters, the characters, the characters, the characters. But but the whole movie is about Jimmy, not the fucking police. In the I Evil disagree. Dead. In, in the Evil Dead. The... In the Evil Dead, dude, everybody that's on screen is a main character. They're all in every single fucking scene, and pretty much every character in that movie wasn't that cool. And that's the problem. I mean, you have the police officer, and he's like a secondary thing. You know, the story is about Jimmy. I thought the torture scenes were kind of weak, you know, when the kid was getting his uh, head clamped in. Um, you can see, Really? Like, you thought that was jo- weak? That's Yeah, because brutal. look, this is why. It's, it's brutal kid. if it's done properly, but you can see when his when the, it, it, the when the jaw is going, you know, clamping shut, when he goes to spit his teeth out, he opens his jaw. So therefore it's not that it's it wasn't tight. It's just like little things like that that show that, you know, that that it, that it really shows its budget and shows that it's not very well constructed. Yeah, I completely disagree. I thought it was really well done. I mean, I like these type of stories that, you know, are just not, they're not flowing that's, you know, that. Yeah, but this story in particular, I don't think it's, it's, I think it's done because it's, there, there was no real story to tell. Like, I, I, I really truly believe that there wasn't a, a real story in here. But do you know, do you, but do you honestly need to know, you know, certain things to, you know, just to accept I don't need to know it, Jimmy but I need was. it to flow well. I need it to be able to transition from one scene to the next without being so jarring. It was really frustrating to watch because I'm like, well, well, who the hell is this and why the hell are they there now? Like, I don't I don't know. Like, you you're know, watching this girl go from one location to another. It doesn't even seem like these two like, locations are you know what? each other. I, I think you need to watch it again because, the you know, after watching it again, there were certain things that I noticed, too, that – you know, it's probably, you know, one of those things that, you know, one of these movies that you definitely need to see over once, you know, more so than once. So what was the story? Like, the besides, this kid is obviously controlled by some supernatural force, whether it's the devil or a demon. Well, he's just, he's just possessed. Yeah, He's just okay. possessed. And that's basically what it is. And he's just on a warpath. That's basically what it is. You know, he's he's pissed off because of what has happened with his teachers and, you know, the students and stuff like that. Hence his killing spree and stuff. That's really all it is. There's not a lot there. You know, I will give you that. There's not a lot there. But I, I really like the way it was told. You know, and, you know, it's just kind of here you learn this little thing and then, oh, it goes back to Jimmy being in school. And, you know, and then it cuts to this and stuff. I, I just I really like that kind of structure of the film. 
I, I like those structures too. I, I actually like those a lot, but they're, this one is just not done well to me. It's just, there's so many instances where I'm looking at the film and I'm like, I'm like, that felt so not smooth. Like that transition between that scene and that scene was just so unsmooth that it really is taking me out of the film. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't have a problem with uh, transitions or anything because you know, especially watching it again, you know, yesterday. Well, I maybe was like, watching it again does help, but also like, so some things I just, he's, he's capturing people. He's locking them in jails. This, where's this place at? What are they doing? Like what, why is all these torture devices there? What, like how, but he, how do these people, but you have to give the kids some type of angle, right? He's basically just there to kill. Yeah. But he's also off, and the, that's what he's doing. The acting during the torture scenes I thought was just, terrible like the one person getting burned i was like that is the most unbelievable acting that i've seen lately um it it, it was not re it, it didn't have the a, a sense of like real uh but like torture it, to it to me it so it felt almost like cartoony <laughs> like you look at something like okay. uh but you, you have to realize this, this is like a really really low budget film so right? was something like august underground though you know, and and that is believable torture to me. Yeah, but this, you know, this movie isn't strictly about torture, though. You know, yeah, so I mean, with also August goes back to the stupid title. <laughs> well, yeah, I, like I said, I I even agree. Like the title "Torture Chamber" isn't the best working title. I wish it was actually called something else. To be honest, I think it is a mis little misleading because this movie isn't about sitting in a dungeon. And pulling off a Fred Vogel fucking torture scene. I think there's just nothing there, man. There's not really anything and to, it, to I, hold me in it. What, really, what is there I, that, besides I, I really, just the way the story is told? What else do you like? I, I loved it that it was it was very visual driven. Like there was a lot of scenes that were just kind of slow and fucking. But there's not much dialogue too, and the, hence the visuals. And that's what kind of you know even some of the story was told that way too. You know, I like that. Mm, I didn't. I, Jeremy, right? Like that. Those are the things that I really enjoyed about this movie. I and didn't think it was that visual, dude. It felt really like almost full moony to me. Like it. Like I. Really? I could, it really felt like. Uh, it felt. Man, I can almost the first, feel the camera the guys person. like standing there. You're the first person shit. I've heard that hasn't liked this movie. Yet. That's so like. There's weird. not. There's not like that good a lighting. It's. I don't know, dude. I didn't really feel it at all. Well, and to I be was, honest, I most thought this of the was going to be a good in movie. The dark, in the dark, it was. It is. I mean, just because you doesn't, you don't like it, doesn't mean it's not good. I mean, honestly, you're the first person I've heard say that they didn't like this movie. It's really interesting. I find it very intriguing. But I don't you know. know I just, I, I, you still haven't like convinced me on on things that I'm like not really seeing. I don't. I don't. I honestly am surprised. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm not trying to convince you at all. I'm telling you, you why I like the movie. Because yeah, I don't but that's what I'm you. saying. Like, if you that's don't what... like the movie, you don't like it. But I'm telling you, I love the visuals. I love the score. I love the fact that there's no dialogue in the film, barely. I, I thought the atmosphere was fucking awesome. I love how the movie's not spoon-fed. It's told in ridiculous fucking, you know, kind of all over the place. I love that. It keeps you intrigued. It doesn't... It it has everything that just keeps me wanting to watch to the end, you know, <laughs> and I do agree. Like I thought that uh, big pussy in the film from The Sopranos, what's his name, Vincent uh, Pistori or something like that, who ate I all thought, the who ate all the gobble goo. <laughs> yeah, I actually thought that he was pretty bad in the movie. To be honest, I Dude, didn't think that ending was, that was awful. Also, the whole thing with the mother it was like, oh man, I I didn't get why did he take? Okay, here's another thing. Why did he take the mother? Uh, who's like blind to that place, to the to the like castle torture chamber thing? It's it's ludicrous. It does not make sense. <laughs> See, I think once again you need to watch. I'm not going to get into that because now you're just getting into spoiler type ter territory and stuff here. So I'm not going to get into this. But I think it is definitely something that. Well, I mean, you're obviously not going to watch this again. But um, <laughs> I mean, there's so. I mean, I'm not even. I don't even care about convincing people. I mean. No, I mean, it's, I, will not, I don't totally... mean like convincing, dude. I just mean like like sharing what, like like showing me why you like it. That's what and I meant I, by actually convincing. another thing. Another thing I liked about Jimmy is the fact that he, I don't know. I mean, this is another unexplained thing. You know, he is kind of, you know, he's possessed and stuff, and he's got this priest brother. Of course, he has his priest brother. You know, I mean, those Ridiculous. things are very, those things are very cliched, but. 
I do like the fact that like all of a sudden like I don't know I just thought not only kind of, not only does he, he have could like fires but he's an edgy priest brother yeah who says fuck to his dad <laughs> yeah I know but I mean just because you're a priest doesn't mean you can't swear I, I thought mean, the whole family dynamic thing was pretty 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 damn regular run of the mill shit the father's an asshole the you know it is ah man yeah but those are you know they are the very typical elements of you know creating but when you Jimmy barely is. have anything else in terms of story those elements being so being cliched really kind of brings it down when those are your only elements that, that you're dealing about, with like jimmy i mean i think you have to use your imagination a little bit too i mean jimmy is you know he's into this satanic rituals and stuff like that and you know obviously because he's possessed and whatnot and stuff. Um, I like I that. I like that. I don't, need, I, don't need, I don't need to know anything else. That's the thing. I just don't need to know a whole lot more about it, about that and stuff. I, I really like the, I like the like, fact that, you know, he could light fires with his mind too. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. But at the same time, you know, you can look I at just, a lot of type films. Like, what was Jimmy's goal? Like, there's no... To if fucking you're gonna kill. Make him he's, a villain, he's possessed. But he's, okay. he's evil. He's just there to kill because, I mean, first of all, he didn't start out as a burn victim. I mean, this is what pissed him off and obviously set him over the edge. I mean, it's quite obvious, right? I mean, he wasn't necessarily... Well, I don't know. He, like, was, he was seemed pretty pissed off when he put that bag over the kid's head. Yeah, that is true. But, I mean, you know, he didn't... <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. So, but, so I no, mean, but, I mean, like, what was... He's to kill people. Okay, he, he burned... He can set the floor on, on high heat, but... Uh, instead, like I, I don't, I just didn't. Okay, that's cool, man. If if you don't, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Like that's fine, but no. But what was like? Why would he not kill? You know, uh, th these people. Like it, it seems like nobody could be a threat to him because he just can make the floor burn hot, and it just. I don't. Totally. I didn't really buy him as a villain. Like he doesn't have a presence, like Sam from Trick or Treat or something. Like it's just some weird kid with uh, crappy Freddy Krueger remake Scarface. His face, okay. his face kind of reminded me of Jack Earl Haley's. Hey, uh, uh, Jeremy, do you want to chime in here? Not really. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. No, no, no. no what, what are I, your I thoughts kind of on you have to, You're part of this, too. Be honest. Just what What did you think of the film? I don't know how you don't like the atmosphere. I don't get it. I didn't, I, I, it's not that I don't like the atmosphere. I really didn't feel much of an atmosphere at all. And I don't know if it – what like I, I don't know – I seriously just – it was kind of just like a, there was a, lot a, of a kind of bad you know, movie for me. Some of the establishing shots and – I don't know, man. I really liked – I mean there was some out of scene – I think there was a lack of establishing shots to where you didn't know where the fuck you were sometimes because the, it just transitioned from one thing to the next and there was no really establishing I'm talking, shots. I'm, I'm, well, the establishing shot is like the first shot in the film. That's what the – JP, you obviously oh. don't know what your film film – grammar establishing shot no, is establishing one shot. shot is also when you uh like film like on roseanne when you when you there's a, a shot of outside the diner and then no. it's inside establishing shot is the no. first shot of a film establishing shot the definition in film is it's the, the very first, first shot the in the film yeah and I establish mean, where the film takes place yeah and that's yeah, you, and know, that you also, know like when you're watching a film and you see an overhead shot of a city or whatever and you know i mean that's not an establishing what? shot that's just a, a sh an overhead shot well, no, it can be an established shot. I mean, if Woody it's Allen, the first shot. It is. Woody yeah. Allen's done that many times. Woody Allen is the king of yeah. established yeah. shots. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've wrote, God, <laughs> so many papers on, uh, um, I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you otherwise. No, and I'm not I, expecting you to. I'm just, I, really, I just, I, I just don't understand the, like, especially right from the beginning. Like, I thought there was a lot of great shots, man. I mean. I don't know. I don't really. I don't know what else it, to say. I don't know if it. it maybe I wasn't noticing some of the the shots and stuff because I was so taken out of the film by the fact that, um, I just I, I didn't think any of it really had a purpose. Nothing felt purposeful to me. Like any actions and characters think, didn't. I think feel... you were misled by the structure of the film. I think right away because even when I was watching the movie with my wife, she was like, "What's going on?" And, you know, I will admit the first time I watched this movie, I was a little confused at times. Like, not to the point where I was like, I have no idea what's going on. But re-watching it for the second time, I was like, okay, I kind of knew exactly what I was getting myself into. So maybe that's just a, 
you know, one of those things where it does need to be watched a couple of times because it's not structured like your general film. Mm-hmm. Like it's all over the place. It really what is. What about the guy in the, in the hole with the fucking dirt? Like where, like where did this whole, con- like there's so many just oh. like things that it's just like silly to me. It's like, Act- it's just bad movie making. Like some of the, like in terms of um, like the, the, the narrative, the, the, the the cliches are just over the top like ridiculous like the girl falls down a trap door like what the fuck this isn't scooby doo <laughs> that some of that stuff just came off really silly to me dude it, it really did like she falls she falls down a hole and then ends up with an axe in her hand it's like that stuff is cartoony man <laughs> i i don't see it do you now. disagree you don't think that stuff's cartoony that she falls no. down a trap door yeah, but she's falling down a trap door, yeah, maybe a little cliched, but I mean, it's not how it's done. It's not done in a comical way, though. And like, you can fucking obviously distinguish between Scooby Doo and Torture Chamber that it's not fucking comical. <laughs> Dude, like, it, I mean, come on, man. It's cliched as hell. It's like trap doors, spooky houses, creaky doors, shit like that. It's just, I don't know, man. I didn't think there was anything original really in here. It's just. Oh man! What's really, really original? Wish, what, where's where's re- the original stuff in this one? I, I'm not saying that anything really is that original. You okay, know, so and you it agree doesn't. With it, that, then. And it doesn't even matter that it, it doesn't isn't. have to be original. I know, you know there's there's tons I, of films I, that know, I love that whatever, aren't original. I just I personally love the structure and I loved how it started. And, and no, I will say the ending is a little far fetched and a little weird, and may not make a hundred percent sense. <laughs> even after watching it a couple times but you know it doesn't really bother me i i mean honestly i'd watch this again and i don't know it's just it's interesting jeremy you gotta say something yeah yeah i want to i want to hear what you have to say dude i like i like the shots it's definitely he definitely has if you if you watch the film and look at the shots he definitely has he definitely has interesting shots i really i i know jp talked about that a little bit and he didn't see it and I think that's like, I think the point is it's not supposed to have a plot. Gummo doesn't have a plot. Once again, connecting back there, to Gummo, but, but it is... works for you. This, this, it, this, this about, it, it, it's barely connected. Um, I kind of like associated with like a dark hallway. You know, people walk down, and especially in the film, people walk down, you know, empty hallways that have no no purpose, but it's just there, to you know. See, man, I, I agree that a film can be just, you know, it, it to me, Come it, on, just, man. it didn't have enough, man. That wasn't enough for me. Just it's to, like, it's like, why do people get, get tossed into the, into the torture chamber devices by children? I mean, it really doesn't have any point. It's just a killer kids movie, really. Like none of these kids really had anything. Like none of the characters were well developed. None of the, you know, the trap door stuff and all that stuff that takes me out of the film. I can't take you serious when you have a trap door because the, the tone of this film is very serious, and that's the thing. You're having trap doors and and all these different torture devices that it, it doesn't feel like naturally like these people are fearful of these torture devices like no 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 i don't want to go in a torture device they're just like it, it's one scene to the next and just these these things that just take me out of the movie okay uh, yeah i mean whatever man we can talk <laughs> I mean, about that, this all night. that's totally your but like honestly i think the first 20 minutes of the film is so cool because there's you know there's a real there's really good you know shots in the film and there's barely any dialogue and i like that you know it's just basically it's starting to tell a story with no dialogue. And I really, really respect that. And I think it's kind of, you know, it's different. It, yeah, but it's not something that is, is like, just because you did that, like, I think. But I'm just telling you what good. I like of it. If yeah, you and I'm telling you what totally... I don't like with it. You know, okay, I'm not I... saying you're wrong at all. Yeah, you are. How am I saying you're wrong, dude? <laughs> how, is, just... how is this any different than the woman? You know, Moots didn't like, like the all, woman. All, you like the woman. Before Moots we like go on. Chamber. The, the number one thing is no matter what film is subjective and, and, and nobody's technically right. So even, even if I'm feeling di- that I'm disagreeing and I'm feeling different about it, I don't think that you're wrong. I mean, I think that I am have my own opinions and I think that my opinions are right for me. But it goes without saying that I, that I – you should. It should always go without saying that it's my opinion. It's your opinion. We shouldn't ever have to say in my opinion because it's always in our opinions. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. And uh, for everyone out there listening, we're not actually fighting. <laughs> no, I love Mitz. Uh, and I yeah, know, he has a great but, taste in films, and he's probably seen it a different way than me. I think it's a. I don't think it's a. When you when you see my rating, it's not the worst film I've ever seen. It's nowhere even close. It's it's in, in my opinion, slightly below average. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, so speaking rating of time. ratings. Uh, well, Jeremy, you might as well go. By first. the way, really quickly, an establishing shot via Wikipedia is a shot that sets up the beginning of a film or a scene. So that's what I was kind of getting at. Okay, but yeah, well, okay. Um, so Jeremy, rates ratings on it. Mm-hmm. Could go with a, a a six and a half, six out of half out of ten on this one. I still don't know Jeremy's opinions of this one besides he likes the shots in the atmosphere. <laughs> so this is all yeah. about you too. It's um you I love listening to arguments about films or disagreements on films. I find it fascinating that one person can have such a positive opinion towards a film and one person can absolutely not hate the film but extremely dislike it. I don't even extremely dislike it. I just, I, I was really, you know, I was playing devil's advocate. Moods really likes it. So I kind of went to the opposite because I don't like it as much. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my rating is a four and a half out of 10. I didn't absolutely hate this film. I just thought it was not as good as, you know, an average film. Uh, you know, I kind of express why I don't think it's a terrible film. And I, I really do, <laughs> um, you know, but you do understand respect why Mood's I, opinions on films. Why and, I like it, though, right? Yeah, I can. Like I can. You, see I think you were having a hard time understanding why I liked it. I, honestly, you know. I was looking for something that I may have overlooked. I wanted you to convince me in a way like that. Maybe I, I missed something. Maybe there was something. I'd be like, oh yeah, now I see the film in a whole different light. Um, okay, so now, that can't happen every film. time. Okay, there's one part in the film with the uh, character Ralph. Don't <laughs> off me. There's okay. one part in the film with Ralph and, um, you know, his blonde girlfriend and they're in the, you know, in the fucking, I guess they're the, not in the woods, but yeah, I guess they're in the woods. Yeah, they're in the woods. <laughs> and Jimmy, or Jimmy, uh, Ralph decides to go take a piss and then he falls into that hole. Yeah. Did you honestly really see that happen? Like the way it was filmed, like the way it fell into that hole, like, were you expecting that to actually happen or was it just... Was it predictable for you, or was that it he was just... going to fall in a hole? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> I know. I, I thought the way the way it's filmed because he just kind of gets up and he's still kind of talking to her, and then all of a sudden he's like in this hole, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I I don't know. I thought that part was cool. Um, it doesn't yeah, really for, add a lot like, to the film. Like the uh, the girl, I don't know. Like bad characters, man. Ditzy just. I know you get that in like slashers and stuff, and it's fine, but this just seemed like to- in terms of tone, it was like so much serious that i was expecting some like stronger characters Mm -hmm. um okay so if i had to rate it i am going to give it a seven and a half out of (laughs) ten so we're like all over the fucking place honestly that then i was expecting a little higher like since you talked about it so awesome um i can kind of see that you know it just wasn't for me man the the story just wasn't there for me the seven and a half is a good rating for me though I mean, when I give anything higher, yeah, it's I guess like, so. I'm really freaking out about a film then. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, it's. I think it's a solid, solid, but that's just me. I was honestly expecting, like, I, I was expecting to like this one just because I knew you had liked it. And <clears throat> I don't know, man. I was just really surprised by the type of film that it was, the just things that I didn't like I really didn't like, so that didn't help. Mm. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have to defend my – my harshness on this one. <laughs> oh, I think I think it's great, man. So that's um, you know, for everyone that follows our podcast, uh, the woman and torture chamber were interesting conversations. But this is what we this is why we do it, though. Really, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, if we're agreeing on every single fucking movie, um, and this is not staged at all. If anyone's thinking that, like, we don't pre-talk about the shit at all. Yeah. So. This is all genuine, and yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's totally what it should be. You know, we shouldn't like everything, and I'm glad that we don't. Yeah, um, nobody's yeah. wrong for liking or disliking something. Like I said, you're though, only you know, wrong like I, if you don't talk about it, Jeremy. I've, I've, <laughs> I've recently, I've recently, 
you know, even seen people talk about this on, um, you know, even Luke, uh, Luke, uh, my M- my you know, from the UK. Um, he did a fucking review on this actually, uh, breed even actually, I hadn't even seen the film yet and he fucking loved it. And there's a few other people that just recently talked about this film that were really digging it too. So I was very intrigued by, you know, how you were really disliking this one. I thought, you know, that you would, you know, like something about it, but you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah. It's, it's film. It it's is film. a little below average for me. Like I said, I didn't hate it. I was able to sit through it. I, I could even watch it again. You know, it's not like something I would never watch again. Um, it's just, just not for me. It's not, it's not something that I would run back to at all. Jeremy, what was your rating? Six and a half out of 10. All right. Mm. Is, is that it? Are we, are we done with torture chamber? I think so. Yeah. Think so. Okie dokie. So thank you everybody again for listening to the 18th episode of the 22 shots of moods and horror podcast. Remember next week's question is your top five favorite found footage films which shall be an industry discussion. Leave the comments down below or follow us on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast and leave your answer over there. Any other questions you want to ask us, if you want to listen, up, listen to us over on the devilseyes.com, please do so, and you could read my Blu-ray reviews over there as well. A new one shall be coming out very soon on the IFC Midnight Film ATM, so stay tuned to that over there on the devilseyes.com. Next week's film is, once again, I don't have the list. <laughs> Dead Shadows. Screen Dead Factory Shadows. Release of Dead Shadows. Dead Shadows. So stay tuned to that next week. And just to remind you guys, the question of the week. Jeremy. I, Jeremy just <clears throat> reminded him. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Did, that, I, did I fall out of there for one second until totally he missed that? Yeah. Yeah. Found footage. Found you footage. can – uh, of course, email us at 22 shots moods and horror at gmail.com and follow us on 22 shots horror on Twitter. Yes. So we got, we actually got some followers on there, like, like more than I was expecting. That's interesting. Thank you everybody for following us over there on Twitter. So hope everybody has a good rest of their week. We shall talk to you again next Monday with the 19th episode of 22 shots of moods and horror. Kind of crazy guys. We've been doing this for nine, 18 episodes going into our 19th episode. Hope everyone enjoys it, and we should talk to you guys again soon next week. Have a good week, everybody. Peace. Peace. And we're clear at 2 hours and 49 minutes.